podcast coverage of Collegiate Star League, League of Legends. My name is Andrew Howe, once again joined by Adi Pal Parikh. And today, we're looking at a crucial matchup between Tufts University Blue and Lehigh University Phoenixes. Uh, right now, I believe we have the standings popped up for you right now on the stream. And taking a look at the standings, um, we do see Tufts in that ninth place spot, sitting at one and two, um, with the top speed seeds being held by Boston University, Marist, and... NYU Lavender, which was Tufts' recent most recent opponent, um, and Adi Tufts had a, had a had a bit of a tough time against NYU, going down 2-0. Uh, Tufts is currently coming off a two-game losing streak. Last week they had, like I said, a brutal zero and two series against NYU. In the game one, they were able to find some leads early and take some favorable fights. However, in the mid game, they had their composition completely taken apart. Um, the Singed on the enemy team was able to find his way into the back line and completely split up the team, which means they often found themselves in a situation where the Tufts ADC had to stand in the back and watch as Singed zoned them off and the Tufts mid and jungle uh, had to fight against the rest of NYU. In game two, NYU really played around the top lane. They picked the NAR into the Orin matchup and uh, really snowballed off that lead. After NAR got a killer two lead, they kept sending one or two members into the top lane to turn that NAR into a really strong, uh, really strong laner and also uh, spread some gold to the mid lane and jungle. This meant that as they got into the mid to late game, they were not only uh, Tufts was not only facing a comp with a really good team fight potential, but also a really big lead. Absolutely. So Tufts, once again, as you said before, sitting at that one and two spot, going to try and work their way up the standings in the weeks to come. But Adi, the biggest thing we got to bring up today is that this matchup will be played on preseason 11. That's right, folks. We are on patch 10.23 this week. And that means some new jungle changes, some stat revisions, and most importantly, items and items galore. It's going to be a really new experience in the games, Adi. Give us the rundown of what's going on. Yeah, like I said, this preseason Riot has decided to completely change the items in League. The biggest change is now these items have tiers, so there are basic items, epic items, legendary items, and mythic items. Epic items and basic items are basically like the components for legendary and epic items, uh, or like legendary and mythic items. Um, however, uh, now there are mythic items, which you can only build one of and buff all the other legendary items you build. Another big change they have made is how cooldown reduction works. Now, instead of getting cooldown reduction, you get something called Ability Haste. Before the cooldown reduction, you have reduced the cooldown ability by that amount. So 40% cooldown reduction would make your cooldowns have 60% of the normal cooldown. This meant that more cooldown reduction you had, more value you would get from getting more cooldown reduction. Now the way it works is uh, 10 Ability Haste means you can cast 10% more often. This means that the value of Ability Haste is the same no matter uh, how much you have and when you buy it. So relative to cooldown reduction, early, early Ability Haste is worth more. Additionally, there is no cap on ability haste. Yeah, all these items and everything is going to be super crazy and super interesting. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big, a really big deal. Um, just looking at all these different items, and most importantly, these mythic items. Every single item, uh, all these mythic items are are like super powerful items, giving you these really interesting buffs and 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 powers. And Adi, I think that the, the biggest. Um, Biggest winners here uh, so far early on have been the tanks and have been the assassins. Coming as uh, ADC main, I am not too happy about uh, some of the mythic items. Like they're okay, but like compared to like you're saying the tank and assassin items, it feels like uh, they don't pack as much of a punch. Additionally, uh, the way that crit works now is um, it does crit crit damage is a little bit less. I think it's about. 175 percent 80 instead of 200 percent and uh critical strike chances also spread across more items so before you get like 25 percent crit from like your zeal items and your infinity edge now a ton of items give uh, critical strike like bloodthirster your last whisper items um qss even gives uh or the qss items even give a uh, crit strike chance now and they give about 20 percent each so when you get to like five or six items you're usually like a little bit stronger, but early on, uh, ADCs, I feel like, are not doing so good. Yeah, I mean, right now, um, it's going to be super interesting. I mean, obviously, it's going to be really confusing for a lot of us, especially us here casting. Um, all these new items all have different looks. They've completely revamped the way that all the items look. Even the ones that have been in the game and remain in the game all look pretty different. So uh, please forgive us if, if, it's, um, if we're kind of fumbling our way through all of this and 
going through all the items a little bit um, slower and stuff, um, as well as like some changes in the jungle. So um, looking at this matchup, though, we do have, once again, this is still a CSL match. It's not just like an experimentation on the preseason. This does have big implications for the rest of the season. So we've got Tufts versus Lehigh. For Tufts, it's the same lineup we've seen all season. We've got Easy Life in the top lane. Born in the jungle, Argentine import mid with bot lane Jansu and Constantine Valdor. Whereas on, on the other side, we've got Lehigh. And actually, I do think that they're running with a different lineup than what is originally um, shown on their um, starting lineups on the CSL webpage. So I think we've got Xiphius in the top lane, Lehigh, um, namesake, I guess, in the jungle. Kyose in the mid lane with bot lane Sumin and Hansun. So this is going to be a, a bit of a different look for Lehigh, which is a team that kind of is looking to turn it around a little bit after a rough first three weeks. Yeah, and um, I just like thinking about some of the potential matchups. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, what Tufts has been uh, playing, uh, like just like in CSL matches and in solo queue. However, now with these item changes, it's going to be really interesting uh, what what they might pull out. Uh, we were talking a little bit before about uh, how the assassin items are pretty strong. And um, one thing we've all been uh, kind of talking about is Morn Kha'Zix. So I'm really hoping we'll uh, see him bring it out because I feel like Kha'Zix uh, can do a lot with these new items. Yeah, I think Kha'Zix for Tufts is going to be a big deal. I also think that some of the tanks in the top lane are going to be really huge for Tufts Easy Life. Uh, a notable Orn player, um, but I do think that he will be able to kind of expand his champion pool a little bit into these champions such as Maokai, uh, Malphite, even something like Scion. They've been really OP so far with the new items. Um, the new Mythic line on the tanks is really busted with like the Frostfire, Gauntlet, Sunfire, Aegis, and uh, I think it was what, Chemtech something. Um, see, again, we're, we're kind of kind of taking it one step at a time here. We are about to head into the draft really quickly. Um, but Adi, anything uh, we kind of want to um, bring up before we um, get into the draft? Uh, yeah, so you're talking about how these tanks are really strong, which uh, kind of, um, I don't know. I don't really know what to think about uh, going into the draft for the top side prioritization because, like I was talking about, a lot of the um, places where Tuss was losing was because of like the top lane matchup between like picking the Orin into like the Gnar or the Singed and having top lane uh, run away with the game. So while I do want to see these like items being picked up, maybe I don't want to see... Uh, as much of a weak side focus onto the top lane, unless uh, they really think they can snowball the other lanes. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, once again, draft is about to be started off. This will be on pro draft. Um, not we, we won't be seeing the typical client um, for this champion select, just to give everyone a chance to pick um, all the champions and have access to all the champions. So. Um, yeah, that is going to get underway. Tufts um, with the coin toss has taken blue side and Lehigh has taken red side for game one. Once again, this is a best of three and the uh, teams will switch sides after game one. And if a third game is does happen to be necessary, another coin flip will determine the side selection for that one. So Adi, um, yeah, I think we're about to get into the draft phase here. And with Tufts on blue side, I'm actually kind of hoping we see the Shen uh, prioritized for Tufts because... Uh, it wasn't really one of the champions you were listing as some of the um, uh, champions to look out for with the new mythic items. However, Easy Life has played a ton of Shen. It is a comfort pick, and just coming off of last week, I would really like to see uh, them pick uh, a champion that he is really strong at and can uh, apply a lot of pressure and may not be as good with the items, but uh, still pretty decent. And um, yeah, I just like to say, a comfort pick. Getting started here in the banning phase. Interesting bans coming out here. Master Yi and Olaf both being taken away from Lehigh. One of the one of their team's top rated players. So definitely makes sense to be taking two of their champions away. Whereas on the other side, we do see Kale actually being taken away for Easy Life, as well as the Ash and Kha'Zix for Jansu and Morn respectively. Yeah. And one quick note uh, about the Ash. Uh, before we uh, keep talking, those of you who may have uh, those of you who may have been uh, watching preseason may have uh, noticed an interaction with Ash and Gizu's Rage Blade where um, the Ash not be able to strike as that's what uh, Gizu's Rage Blade does, it makes it so you can't create, but 
turns your critical strike chance into on hit damage. However, Ash doesn't get the uh, crit modify damage from actual crits. It makes it so all of your autos uh, do more damage depending on how much crit you have. However, uh, they have uh, patched that out. Uh, Ash does not get both the damage from her passive crit and the uh, on hit damage from the instance. You just get the on hit damage from the instance. So Ash is still like relatively strong for the utility and everything, but she's not. She doesn't have that broken interaction. Caitlyn Malphite being locked in for Lehigh. This Malphite is something that we were talking about before, and uh, with Zephyrus on this champion, um, definitely going to be a really scary pickup here. Jin Leona going to be the bot lane that Tusk picks up here. Jansu and Constantine will be picking this up. I'm really interested to see if Leona goes for something more supportive as a mythic, like the Locket, or instead goes for something more damage heavy and more carry oriented, like uh, Chemtech. And as I say that, Shen is being locked in here for Tusk, so two tanks in the top lane. As we see a Malphite Yasuo combo here on the side of Lehigh as we round up the first phase. And uh, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, just like, again, with these uh, mythic items. But as the Yasuo was locked in last, I'll quickly mention, uh, now that most, uh, most crit items give 20% crit chance and a lot more AD items give crit chance, they wanted to change how crit works with Yasuo because... Uh, you can't just build two items and be uh, done because uh, Yasuo only doubles crit chance. You need three crit items, but then you get access crit. And with all the other AD items you build that also give crit, you're gonna have way too much crit chance on Yasuo. So what they did is they made it so access critical strike chance turns into bonus AD and critical strike damage. So uh, Yasuo will be a really interesting champion to see, um, especially as uh, this is the first patch with these changes and uh, they could be either really strong or not enough to compensate for the awkward uh, crit numbers he also has to deal with. Yeah, really interesting way that they kind of tried to deal with that. We see a Morgana being locked in. Kate Moore going to be a really, really dominant bot lane here uh, in the early laning phase. Going to try and take some plates. Uh, on the side of Tufts right now, Elise and Echo were both taken away. Argentine Import will not be able to play that Echo. Uh, I will be excited to see if something like that Hecarim comes out for Morn. Definitely did benefit from these new item changes, and Hecarim has been a staple of Morn's repertoire for pretty recently and throughout this whole season. We're going to see if that happens. It's actually going to be the Sejuani, so it looks like Tufts is kind of taking advantage of these heavy tank and mythic items being super broken. So it looks like Sejuani is going to be locked in, leaving Argentine Import for the last bit. I kind of want to see a little bit more of a carry from Argentine Import now. Like, yeah, they have a lot of ways to protect the Jin, especially with the Shen picked up. But I think with the Malphite Yasuo, it, it'll be a little risky to consolidate all the damage on Jin. And the Victor locked in for Argentine Import. Victor's also a uh, champion who has changed a lot uh, with this preseason. Uh, the hex core upgrades that we all know and love are no longer there. Uh, the way that Victor upgrades his abilities now is every time he gets, I think, uh, Completed mythic or legendary item, he gets to upgrade. Um, he gets to upgrade one of his abilities. However, uh, given the fact that uh, the core had a ton of AP on it and we give up to 180 AP when you get to level 18, they are making it so uh, now you get like 10% AP. I think that's what it was on the PB before. I haven't uh, checked for what it currently is, but uh, you get X amount of uh, AP percent per. Uh, upgrade you get so when you get like four items and upgrade all of your uh, abilities you'll get around like i think i don't know the pb back again like on the pb last time i checked around 40 percent bonus ap super interesting comp coming in from tufts really going to be excited to see how all these mythic items line up with the different champions that have been locked in looks like tufts is going to be taking advantage of these tanks and lehigh in response go with the trundle pick something that can kind of take away the resistances, take away some of the tankiness from someone like the Shen or Sejuani. Uh, Trundle into Sejuani is traditionally that counter pick, just given how their passage and ultimates interact. It's gonna be really interesting to see how Lehigh picks this up. Yeah. All right, uh, talking more about uh, mythic items. Um, one, uh, in we got so much to talk about, Adi. Yeah, so much. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, Caitlyn. As they change critical strike a lot, uh, and Caitlyn has the headshots. They wanted to make it so um, Caitlyn doesn't get affected as much. So they changed the numbers on the headshot. So you roughly get the same amount of damage from crit uh, as you did before. But um, I think out of the ADCs, Caitlyn gets to be a little bit um, less affected than some of the other ones, which makes her, I think, 
a little bit stronger, which could be really interesting to see uh, how she plays out. And Jin, on the other hand, Jin is actually uh, a champion that has been had a lot of experimentation with his uh, builds uh, in the past like half a week since uh, this patch came out. So there are some that go for the normal like one of the three crit mythic items and a fleet footwork, but then there are also uh, some who go for the uh, one of the lethality mythic items. I think it's the one that. Uh, I don't, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's the one that like when you uh, do like two instances of damage or something to a uh, champion, you do an extra little bit of bonus damage on top of that. And there's another lethality item that's a le legendary that gives both crit and lethality and executes any champion below 5% HP. So I'll be really interested to see uh, which build um, Jiansu ends up uh, going for. Taking a look at the team comps once again, it's, it's kind of a different um, parity here that we see. We see a really high CC high tankiness composition coming out of Tufts, which is kind of the things that have been super uh, valued in the preseason so far. But I think Lehigh did a really good job at trying to counter it with these last two picks with the Morgana and Trundle. It's going to be really crucial to see where Shen places that Spirit's Refuge, um, as Kaylin and Yasuo are going to be the primary damage dealers um, for this team. It's going to be a really interesting game one. We're going to come back to you on Summoner's Rift right after this break, but don't go anywhere. We got Tufts versus Lehigh. CSL week four action right after this.
All right, you ready to ready to click play? Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll go to directed once you click play, yeah. Three, two, one, play. We live? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Summoner's Rift and welcome to JumboCast's first look into preseason 11. My name is Andrew Howe, brought, um, and alongside me is Adi Palparik. And Adi, we are in for an intense matchup here between Tufts University Blue and the Lehigh University Phoenixes in this week four action game one. You can already see uh, some of these uh, item changes, or the new looks for these items. Uh, the pods and the starter items look completely different, so it's uh, very interesting indeed. Yeah, the Doran's blade. It's gonna be so. It's gonna be take. It's gonna take a long time for me to, to look at the difference in that item. Uh, just for the most part. One thing I do want to take a look at, Adi, is the smite changes for the jungle. Um, there's a little five next to that, and it's not machete. What what is what is that that the junglers have? Yeah, so uh, instead, what these junglers now have are an item with, uh, as you see, uh, five stacks on him. And every after you use Smite five times, the item goes away and you get either Chilling Smite or uh, Challenging Smite uh, for the rest of the game. So uh, uh, the blue one is Chilling Smite and the red one is Challenging Smite. So items definitely work a little different. There are no like jungle items like Warrior and stuff like before. You just have these uh, items that... Uh, you know, will go away after you smite five times. Uh, it's very similar to the support item change that happened, uh, I think, around last season. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, yeah. as new uh, jungle items change, how the jungle works. And also two other interesting things um, in the jungle, but I think we're going to have to bring that up a little bit later because we see Lehigh ganking Easy Life already. Level 2 in the top lane has the red buff available. Only Q and W though, no pillar. Going to force a flash out of Easy Life, but it's going to be traded back. Lehigh is taking one tower shot, two tower shots. Might be a little bit too much, and minions are ticking. But Easy Life gets away with his life, and so does Lehigh. A bit of a failed gank right there, but they ended up getting the flash out of the top laner. Really interesting trade. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Kyose and Argentine in port going hard, but this gives Zipheus a lot of agency in this lane after that gank having that Q stack with the comet really interesting way to start the game off see so yeah, I think uh, after they got that flash from easy life they didn't need to uh, keep going for it it seemed like kind of a blown flash from uh, Lehigh uh, there was no really point for that I don't think there's any way the Malphite and Trunk will have enough damage to clean that one up but um, end of the day they get the flight they get the flash out of easy life they have a little bit of advantage for the Malphite and Brown um, just gets the back and continue with clear so as I was saying before, some new changes to the jungle. The red buff and blue buff no longer have negative resistances on their respective damages. Every jungle camp has kind of been um, standardized out to have uh, 20 armor and 20 MR. So it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the clear. And another thing, Rift Scuttler does no Rift Scuttler no longer gives you a regen, but um, Gromp actually gives you that regen now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the playstyles kind of change and how valuable the Rift Scuttler ends up being uh, for some of these junglers after the changes. I'm gonna assume that Risco is still like pretty important just because the vision it gives is like super important. The fact that it's like kind of a neutral objective, but uh, yeah. Fighting the bottom lane a little bit. Nice use of the black shield <coughs> there to block the Zenith Blade root coming out of Constantine and Suman and Hansun will get out safely. This job of the Cape Morgue is just a poke, but that black shield not up anymore. We're gonna see an engage again. Constantine using that Zenith Blade gonna use the cop to cleanse out of Suman. One Q will do it. Johnson was looking for that flash crit, was not able to get it onto Suman, and he gets out with his life. So a bit of a trade of summoners there in the bottom lane. Yeah, and uh, I don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the cable is not only able to cleanse the CC there, but also uh, cleanse that ignite off. So a lot of value with that cleanse right there. Yeah, super um, aggressive play. It looks like you kind of had to do that if you are toughs because Kate Morg is going to be more and more oppressive as we get later on into the game. Lehigh is looking for a bit of a gank in the bottom side, and he's going to try and go for it. Hansel has the binding available, going to land onto Constantine, and the pillar is doing so much work, slowing up Johnson. That's going to be first blood going to Lehigh. Suman is going to pick that one up while Constantine runs for the hills. Um, just a really good job from uh, Lehigh. Uh, you know, capitalizing over the uh, blown flash right there when Johnson tried to go for the execute, and um, really nice first blood picked up. And so far, it's kind of expected, but Lehigh has been more um, dominant on the map than Warren has. With this champion, like the Sejuani, um, probably going to try and farm up until you get some more tankiness and some more stats for yourself. But really good start to the game for Lehigh here on this trundle. 
Yeah. And, uh... Szechuani is, uh, farming up in exchange for the, uh, presence Trundle has had, but, um... I don't know, we'll see if it's, uh, gonna be enough to make a difference. Five minutes into this one, only a 200 gold lead for the Phoenixes. Looking at, um, Lehigh's build, going off of that, we see... Um, something a little bit different. Normally you would see Trundle going for something like Cinder Hulk, but here we see a longsword and dagger coming in. That could potentially be something like that Triforce first item for that Mythic on Trundle. It's going to be really interesting to see how that one turns out. We're going to see Jansu and Constantine pushing up as Hansun takes it back in the, in the bot lane. And uh, they also uh, changed uh, Sheen a bit. So Sheen just doesn't give... Um mana anymore it's just just the 700 gold and uh, all it does is have that uh, uh, extra damage on the auto attack after using an ability level 6 already available for Kyosei but it looks like he's gonna be met by more and chaos um, I mean last breath is going to be used along with the exhaust on the Argentine import not enough damage though and Morn is going to be able to stun him up deadly flourish is going to miss from Jansu but um, looks like it's not even gonna matter Kyosei is locked up and locked down Jansu picks up a kill for himself there yeah master pitch from the bot lane um, Getting up, getting that kill, uh, good job for Morn, uh, you know, dashing over the wall as uh, the also tries to go in, uh, pretty clean kill, however, Balling is uh, pretty down on farm, so, we'll, uh, what ends up happening down there, as like you said, the Kalen Morgana is super oppressive. Yeah, really good job of, for Tufts, for the bot lane of Tufts, using that window to kind of push up and roam mid lane along with their jungler to pick up a kill onto the Yasuo, who's now significantly far behind against Argentine Infort, who has to be one of these primary damage carries for the Jumbos later on. Yeah, and um, we we're talking about some of the uh, changes from Victor, right? And uh, Victor definitely scales a lot harder now, so getting that advantage might mean that's a potential win condition for, uh, for Tufts. We're seeing these Bami Cinders already being locked in, in and purchased for a lot of these members. Xiphias has one, we see Morn with one, and it looks like Easy Life is almost at that stage with those two Ruby Crystals in inventory. It's gonna be really interesting to see which tank items they go for. I'm expecting Easy Life and Morn to go for something like that Frostfire Gauntlet, or iron, whatever the Iceborne Gauntlet is called at this point, um, because of the high physical damage on the side of Lehigh, whereas for, for Xiphias, I, I really don't know. Also, um, I just uh, was looking through the patch notes, and um, I was actually uh, in was actually wrong about how Victor's upgrade works. Now he gets hex fragments from um, minion kills and champion takes downs, and uh, when he gets a hundred, he can upgrade uh, a basic ability. And after he upgrades three basic abilities, he automatically gets his ultimate upgraded. So that's the way uh, Victor now upgrades the, the abilities. Either way, Hexcore is again no longer a no longer an item. Um, for Victor, that part of his passive has changed a little bit. We see Lehi hit that level six subjugate available, and he's now going to try and go for a play on this on, on this ocean dragon. And Zipias is going to join them. Five members of Lehi in this bottom side, getting the first dragon of the game. But it looks like Tufts is going to try and return a little bit on the on the top side with the Rikko. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of an aggressive TP from uh, Malphite. There is no one on top side, even in the bottom jungle. So. Uh... I don't, I don't think that TP was really necessary, but uh, I nice see they're prioritizing that objective, I guess. If he's going to have to take that long, shameful walk back top, doesn't look like they're going to get that much out of it. Morn and Argentine are going to try and take down this Rift Herald, while Shen will get a bunch of free farm here, picking up a nice advantage from himself early on. Yeah, and um, the shot, the Shen, it does have a lot of that dueling advantage, you know in lane uh, with the taunt in the queue. As you can see, I'm taking a massive trade in the top lane. Wow. So I think with that advantage, it's going to be really hard for Malphite to stay in this lane. Yeah, Shen with that percent health on his Q, definitely a good matchup into these tanks. Uh, but he also builds these tank items for himself. It's really interesting to see how this goes down up top. Morn has finished up the Rift Herald. Might be looking top for a play here with Argentine who has that E upgraded already. He's gonna go for a dive early. Glacial Prison is not gonna be used just yet. There it is on to Xiphius. It's going to be a beautiful trade of tower aggro there. Easy Life gets out with just one tower shot remaining to kill him. And a nice play by Tufts. They're gonna pick up the kill onto Easy Life. And with all these members top lane, and the Rift Herald available, it looks like they're going to get nearly every single plate up top. 
Yeah. And there it is. Uh, Fusei is looking to go aggressive though. Um, gonna be um, a really aggressive play if he tries to go in for the 1v3 there. Looks like he's just gonna try and ward Tufts off, try to avoid them from getting that final plate slash first tower gold. Um, but a really nice play from Tufts to execute the dive almost perfectly and end up getting a lot of gold for themselves. They are now almost 2,000 ahead. That was a really good job, like you're saying, of trading the uh, tower aggro. Uh, Shen uh, get, just using the taunts to get out there, and um, the shield helped him uh, survive that shot. And uh, Sejuani was full health, took one more shot, and they cleaned up the Malphite. Easy kill. And uh, now the Shen is going to be really far ahead. Early Rage Knife actually picked up for Kusei in the middle lane. Again, that item is kind of a base of Ginsu's, which means that your critical strikes will no longer crit, but will instead have every attack be doing additional damage on hit. It's going to be really, um, it's really interesting to see that early of a pickup here. Constantine looking to go aggressive, has a solar flare available, not going to look for it just yet. Uh, but there it is, on to Hansun, has no black, no time to use that black shield, uses it now. Soul Shackles will not stop that. Victor, as he's going to go and curtain call it, is issued onto Suman. Meanwhile, in the bottom side of the map as well, Lehi is going for an aggressive trade onto Morn. The subjugate's going to finish him off. That's going to be a kill. Going over to the Trundle, one for one on both sides of the map. And Trundle looks like he's a bit out of position here, but that's easy life in the top lane as well. Going for an aggressive play onto Ziffy is not going to be able to be, have enough damage to take him down. But really crazy play is going back and forth. As Lehi is still chilling in that bottom side of the map, getting that Krug camp picked up. Looks like he might be able to go for an aggressive play onto Jansu now. Uh, you're going to use that um, Frozen Domain as well as the Pillar. Not going to be able to do it. Nice use of the Trap and Deadly Flourish there to zone off the team. And a crazy series of events once again from this game. Really good job from the Trundle uh, finding the Sejuani. The Trundle is kind of that like tank shredder with the ultimate and just the really good dealing power he has. So. I think from now on, if he finds the Sejuani, it's going to be pretty favorable trade or uh, kill for the Trundle every time. Yeah, taking those resistances away is super key. It looks like it's going to be that Triforce most likely being picked up for Lehigh early on. A super aggressive build with that Hearthbound Axe, but I can't talk about that for long because we got to trade in the top lane Kusei. And Ziffy is using that Malphite Yasuo combo nearly to perfection. Spirit Refuge is going to buy some time, but not enough. The last Q will do it. Kusei picks up a kill for himself, and that's a dead Shen up top. Yeah, and um, yeah, I like to see uh, them starting to use that combo that they uh, ended up drafting for. Uh, try to get back a little bit in that top lane, get that Yasuo ahead, because when you're picking that Yasuo Malphite, you need that Yasuo to be stronger. And that early kill is definitely going to be valuable for Kusei later on in this game. Trading in the bot lane again. Uh, surprisingly, this Kate Mork hasn't been able to pick up any plates, but it looks like Constantine's gonna go aggressive here. Soul Shackles and Dark Binding were used onto the support, making him super, super low. One more trap has been issued there, but the nice trade back, and that's gonna be Johnson picking up a kill. Stand United used as well. Easy Life is looking for a trade. Does not have the flash, but it's gonna miss the taunt. Cleanse out to try and speed up Suman, but one curtain call shot will not hit that Caitlyn, a one for zero there, as Tufts turn around what looks to be a disadvantage um, fight for them. Yeah, that was a really good job from the uh, Tufts bottom line. It seems like they were playing a little over aggressive, but the stopwatch uh, thought it was, you know, the Morgana Cam was setting up for after the stopwatch comes up, but actually Jansu set up really well with the traps and the uh, flourish and the Leona ulti that came up as soon as uh, Constantine Baldor came out of stasis to do a lot of AoE damage and turn that fight around. So, really good job from them. One more thing I'll note about the builds is uh, Jansu actually is opting for that uh, Dark Harvest uh, Lethality build that I was uh, talking about. So, it'll be interesting to see how that how that goes. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to probably be, I think that's an Eclipse pickup for Jansu most likely. Um, I, I don't know what the components are for these lethality items specifically just yet. Um, speaking of items though, our first mythic of the games have started to be picked up here. Um, we see Sunfire Aegis being the choice um, of item for both Morn and Easy Life, and it looks like Xiphius will be going for that as well. And uh, one really interesting thing to note is the Yasuo is going for Ginsu's Rage Blade, the item that makes it so you can't crit. However, because you have that double critical strike chance, you know, uh, maybe they're trying to see that the uh, excess crit plus uh, on-hit damage from Ginzus can um, be an more damage than just having normal crit on Yasuo. So I'll be really interested to see uh, how the damage from that comes out. 
Yeah, I have heard a lot of crazy things about Gintu's Yasuo wreaking havoc all over them, all over Summoner's Rift here early on. Uh, just getting that extra damage on hit with that double crit strike has been super valuable for a champion like Yasuo, as well as the recent AD buffs that he's been given due to the latest items. We see Rift's Herald is going to be started up in the, on the bottom side, but no, it's actually going to be Lehigh going for an aggressive three-man play up top. That's going to be the last breath issued. Spirit's Refuge, once again, will not be able to save Easy Life's life, and once again, a nice play by Lehigh um, um, as Husei and Zipheus get another kill for themselves up top. And uh, again, good job using that uh, Malfa Yasuo. I think Easy Life's going to have to start uh, playing a little less aggressive whenever the Yasuo's not there because, you know, whenever that Yasuo's gone, he means he's usually trying to play with that Malfa again. Going for a steal on the Rift Herald, but it's not going to be that for themselves. That's going to be more in falling with the Subjugate used once again onto the Sejuani. Lehigh's going to pick up the Herald, but he might actually be in a bit of trouble here. This is some tanky from the stats and the ultimate. Constantine is going to actually whiff the Solar Flare, but Argentine has a lot of damage, he has the lasers, he has the Q, double stun there with the gravity field, that's going to be a shutdown on to Kusei, Constantine is looking for more with the Stand United coming in as well from Easy Life, that's going to be a double kill for Argentine, and Lehigh is still alive, but maybe not for long, one more Zenith Blade could probably lock him up for the kill, and that's going to be a triple kill coming out from Argentine, and a 3 for 0, actually 3 for 1 I guess, coming out from Tufts, and a great play punishing that Rift Herald. And uh... You know, Victor has uh, the ability to do a decent amount of consistent damage, and um, he also wasn't able to stay on him too much, and Constantine Baldur able to lock him up a tiny bit. He was really able to turn that fight around, so good job from him. Uh, you know, punishing the fact that they used a lot of their abilities to secure that Rift Herald and to kill the Shen in the top lane, so. First tower of the game going to the wards Tufts. Easy Life Shen gonna be picking up that bonus gold. Gonna be super valuable for himself as he picks up a Tiamat, likely going for that Titanic second. Titanic once again has been changed. Uh, no longer has that active crescent, but instead um, does increase damage based on the amount of health you have. And with all these tanks being so powerful, Titanic is definitely gonna be a, still gonna be a solid pickup for Easy Life. And speaking of powerful tanks, Caitlyn has had actually decided to opt for the Kraken Slayer instead of the Gale Force, or um, for me, I don't know the name, but the one that gives the shield. So, uh, really shows that she thinks she's going to need to burn through those tanks. Yeah, and it looks like uh, another aggressive play set up here from Constantine going for some wards, but Lehigh is here and is going to be spotted out. Subjugate is going to be issued onto the Aftershock Leona, going to be huge for some damage, but it does. That looks like it's not going to matter. There is a Solar Flare as well as all the damage. Morn's going to pick up his first kill of the game for himself as that's going to be a, the jungler of Lehigh dead with Dragon spawning in less than a minute. Yeah, really good job from Tufts, you know. Just uh, make sure the Leona is not alone walking into that jungle. Make sure she has the, some support so that they can quickly turn if they find that trundle and uh, they're able to do so and uh, pick up an easy kill. And look at that. With the jungler dead, it looks like Easy Life has the kind of ability to go for a more aggressive plays onto Xiphius, burning him down very, very nicely there with that Sunfire, with that Tiamat in place. And it looks like he's gonna try and roam down, maybe for some vision or maybe for a drag play. Yeah, now one, one more thing to note is that uh, because Victor is so strong now, it's gonna be really hard for Yasuo to keep going back into that top lane because uh, the way is just gonna be permanently shoved into mid lane. We approach the 19 minute mark in this game and a nice job from Tufts early on. They have made some mistakes a bit, I guess, a little bit uh, more towards that top side, but Argentine import is 4-0 and 3. Jansu is 2-1 and 2. Both have big bounties and Constantine is the story here so far. Has 0-0 and 7 score. Looks like Lehigh is going to be going for this dragon, propping the Rift Herald to try and get some pressure for themselves. It's going to be 5 members once again at the drag pit, but Tufts looks like they want to try and contest. It's going to be the dragon picked up for the red team, but Constantine is coming in here with that Sand United on him. Going to be the last breath used onto Argentine, and that's going to be the victor immediately shut down. Easy Life does not have the opportunity to do any damage in the middle of the team. There's going to be a double kill for Tuesday, and he's looking for more in the middle of the enemy team. Actually gets locked up, though. From the Morn E, that's going to be a shutdown onto Kusei, but it looks like the Tufts are still trying to run. Lehigh have won this fight, and they have won it big. This is going to see if they can pick up any more kills for themselves. It's going to be a 3 for 2, um, 3 for 1, sorry, for Lehigh. They pick up the second dragon of the game, and a nice play from them to try and make a comeback here. And this is a little what I was talking about, the fact that the Malphite and the Yasuo can just, like, obliterate one of the carries, and then... Uh... It's going to be really hard for uh, Tufts to um, kill that victor when he's facing down a Malphite ult and Yasuo ult. So, 
Uh, I feel like Jin was able to do some damage on the backside of that fight, you know, able to get the shutdown on that Yasuo. However, uh, he got locked up by that K trap and uh, was not able to get much more done. And that is the plan here for Lehi. They have this Malphite Yasuo, and the goal is to just go in on a carry, go in onto the backline, and just immediately wipe them out before they have a chance to do anything to their team. Argentine import was killed for, um, and taken out of the fight nearly before he was able to get that Chaos Storm out. So a really good job from the team accomplishing what they're trying to do here. It looks like Tufts is going to try and go for this tower in return. Still have that 2,000 goal lead for themselves. But um, Lehi will certainly be a scary threat in these 5v5 team fights to come. Yeah, and uh, you know, the build for Yasuo getting that two cloaks to uh, make sure he gets that 100% crit strike really fast, gets the max damage out of the on hit from the Ginzus, and uh, yeah, uh, start getting more AD because he already has more than 1.4 attack speed, meaning uh, his Qs are the lowest cooldown it can be. Red buff invade here for Tusk. Morn is going to catch out Lehigh. Subjugate is not available, and without that extra tankiness, he is not long for this world. The Glacial Prison will finish him off, and that's going to be Morn picking up his second kill of the game onto the Lehigh jungler. Namesake is down. Argentine is still super strong despite dying there. But yeah, another great play from the Jumbos. Um, yeah, they've been doing a, a really good job this game. You know, just uh, finding picks in the jungle, uh, using their the tools of the Sejuan and the Ona to try to get this uh, Victor ahead and. Uh, Get some pressure on the uh, jungler. Kyuse going for an aggressive play, using that last breath onto easy life, but that Shen, with all that taking, it's not going to be able to be taken down that easily, and it looks like um, Kyuse knows better, knows that he's in enemy territory and decides to back off. Yeah, and uh, I like the attempt, you know, trying to uh, use that pressure. Uh, there's been a lot of resources put into this, uh, into this Yasuo and uh, try to um, you know, punish uh, Tufts for putting so much pressure into the top side, but uh, the uh, not enough to uh, kill that Shen, and Shen was able to easily use E to get out, and um, nothing much gained from uh, the Yasuo. We're approaching the 22 minute mark in this game. Dragon is going to be spawning in less than two minutes, giving both of these teams some time to try and reset, trying to clear the map out before they start. But I might have spoken too soon because we're going to see an aggressive play here on Dahan soon. That's going to be a lot of damage taken out on the Morgana. Black Shield will not save you from Jin damage, and that's going to be a kill going over to Tufts. Yeah, and one interesting thing to note, Jin has actually not opted for the uh, Lethality crit item that uh, executes. He's actually gone for uh, the Edge of Night first and uh, a dagger, which means he might not be going for that item at all, which I think is going to be uh, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I do think that that item, I, I forget, like, is that called like the collector, I think? Yeah, um, something super, like that. Super um, valuable on somebody like this Jin who has all this lethality and the crit, just like an overall really good item for him, but it's actually going to be the crit just start picked up, which means that rapid fire is probably next on the menu for John Su. Um, yeah, going to be, I mean, obviously we're all experimenting here, in the preseason, so uh, it looks like Mythics have been picked up on every single champion uh, as we speak. Immortal Shield Bow gonna be picked up for Kyuse, gonna be giving him that bit of a uh, Phantom Dancer-esque kind of lifeline passive. Uh, something interesting though, we do see that Sunfire picked up for Constantine Valdor. He decides to kind of invest a little bit more into the tankiness, and with these items being so broken in the tank line, gonna be going for that instead of something like Waka. Yeah, and uh, one more thing I want to talk about the Jin build is um, because he's going for that double value item without any crit, it means at, at most he's going to be able to get 60% crit chance, which uh, I don't know if it's enough because I haven't tested enough, but on like first look, it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to uh, fight here down the bot lane. Soul Shackles has been used, but Kyuse did not able to use that last breath on the knockoff. He's going to be assuming picking up the first kill, but that's a Malphite Yasuo coming into the backline. Argentine import is so low, but the Stand United is going to keep him alive. That's going to be easy life saving the side of Tufts, and that's going to be a wipe for the Jumbos. Curtain Call has been issued, and Zoom is the last man alive, and the Curtain Call will do it. Easy Life will pick it up, and that's an ace for the Jumbos. Nice fight there. Easy Life did look like he got caught out, but was able to turn the fight around. And even without the jungler, it's going to be the third, second dragon of the game picked up for Tufts University. Field. That was a really good job from uh, Tufts, just like whittling down the health bars, uh, putting a lot of pressure, forcing them back. So when the Malphite dived in, it wasn't just like uh, a Malphite and Yasuo going in. It was like a half health Malphite and Yasuo going in. So they were easily able to pee him off after the last breath came down. And uh, they were able to pick up some nice and easy kills. Uh, the Jin and Victor are really strong, got a uh, decent amount of damage down, and they got a nice ace that turned into a dragon. 
I think that was a game-saving play. I think coming out of Constantine, Kyuse had a brilliant two-man knockup with a Steel Tempest onto the back line of Tufts early on the fight while he was still at full health, but Constantine, I think, managed to lock him down with that EQ combo, preventing him from ulting in the knockup while, they, while the champions were knocked up. They ended up getting the knockups a little bit later, but it gave Tufts bought them the time to try and turn the fight around. So really, really good job. And that's the power of all this crowd control coming out of the jump of Barnum. Yeah, and now with the Zanyas picked up for the victor, it's gonna be really hard for Malfa Yasuo to, uh, you know, delete him the way they did in that uh, dragon fight earlier. So we're gonna see uh, if this Malfa Yasuo will be able to, you know, be a win condition for them, or if uh, the Victor Jin plus three tanks lineup for Tufts will uh, kind of keep pressuring until they win. Jumbos have almost a 5,000 gold lead for themselves. 26 minutes into this game, no soul condition on the line just yet for either team, as it is kind of 2-2 on both sides. Baron is on the table, but probably not going to be picked up by any team just yet, as they kind of are trying to look to scale a little bit more. But Tufts certainly has the upper hand going forward. Yeah, and uh, I th is that a second item? That is, so there are three items picked up for uh, the Victor, I believe. So I think this Victor is going to be pretty strong. Another red buff invade going to be issued onto Jansu. Going to pick that one up. Deadly Flourish actually used on Lehigh to buy some time, preventing any sort of re-engage. Nice job from Puffs. And 27 minutes in now, we're going to see them try to escape here. Bit of a wild goose chase going on as they're going to try and, and answer with a, a contest of the blue buff. But so much zoning coming out of Tufts. You got the chaos, um, I mean, sorry, the gravity field coming out from Victor. And Argentine Import going to be doing so much zoning, preventing any sort of re-engagement coming from um, Lehigh. As you said before, Adi, we do see the Ludens Cosmic Drive already picked up, but that's going to be a two-man Solar Flare from Constantine. Curtain Call has been issued, and Morn is in the front line looking for some damage. Curtain Call will only land onto Xiphius, but Easy Life is now in the middle of the enemy team. That's going to be a taunted up Caitlyn, and that is a dead one at that. Easy Life picks up the first kill of the fight, and more are soon to follow. They are just diving the tower for dead already, because Kusei was not even there. He's going to try in 1v5, but that's going to be a tough task for Yasuo. And Ace picked up for Tufts, their second of the game, and a huge team fight win for the Jumbos as they look for the inhibitor. That was a great fight, really clean engage. Uh, the Shen was able to find a taunt onto the back line, uh, get the Caitlyn locked up, and he also was nowhere there, nowhere near there, so they were able to uh, get those four kills really easy without the threat of the Malfa. He also turning the fight, and um, that's an inhib taken, and they just gotta get a reset, get uh, some more item completions, and um, yeah, this Tufts are looking really favored in this um, game one with uh, about 8k gold lead. Yeah, gold again, balloon to around 8,000, and that was a brilliant play, and that just shows how much crowd control <laughs> is available, how much lockdown is here for the Jumbos. Constantine with that nice two man ult to start off the fight, and you only get one black shield per team fight, and with that, that means that one of Kusei or Suman will not be able to survive. And I do think that that Black Shield was actually used really, really early um, and ended up not being able to save Suman from that Shen Taunt, um, which ended up being the death of him in there. So under that tower even, Tufts managed to pick up a win. This game, I think, is just like really scary for me in larger context because it kind of makes it seem like we're coming back into that tank meta, which uh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that one, I'll be honest. Flash already forced out of Kusei here. No Baron actually picked up for the Jumbos just yet, but they can probably take that anytime that they want. Um, 29 minutes into this one, a huge dominant lead for the Jumbos, and they're positioned around this top side with easy life split pushing bot. Yeah, and uh, they're really just like pushing uh, Lee high back. Uh, they can't really go to answer this Shen with the threat of them like, losing their base or their top side, so it seems like Tops is just gonna. Uh, run through mid lane, push that wave in, and rotate towards that dragon. Soul point is on the line here for both of these teams. Dragon is going to be spawning right about now, and with Tufts having the inner position, it's going to be a tough um, ask for Lehigh to try and contest his third dragon of the game, picking up here for the Jumbos as they hit Soul point. Yeah, and I think that's smart from uh, Lehigh. They're, they're in no position to contest that dragon right now. I think they have to say is, what they have to say right now is we'll give up the third dragon and um, 
potentially contest for the fourth, but uh, Tufts is going up towards that ball lane, trying to catch up to Caitlyn. Zooming looks like he might be in trouble. That's going to be the Chaos Storm already used, as well as the Solar Flare to lock him into that ultimate. That is a dead Caitlyn, and that looks like it might be the end here for Tufts, I mean for Lehigh, as they have a, they have a miracle to try and come out of this one. They're going to go for it here. Dark Finding actually landing onto Constantine. That's going to be a dead Leon to start it off. Unstoppable Force was used by Zipius, but without being in range for that last breath, and there's Easy Life eating up this champions with that max health, with the Q in the top lane. That's going to be the Glacial Prison used onto Kusei, and without an ultimate available, going to be trying to 1v4 again. A triple kill coming out from the Shen, and that might be all she wrote here as Tufts pick up a dominant 4 for 1 team fight win. Yeah, I think that was a little bit just, um, they, uh, they weren't, that was a little bit of a communication problem from uh, Lehigh. Uh, they had the flash uh, binding onto Constantine Valdor and they were able to uh, pick up that kill, but he also was there picking up that kill when Malphite had ulted in for the uh, four-man ulti, so he wasn't there to follow up with the last breath and uh, they weren't able to turn that fight. Additionally, when Kaelin got picked, Malphite was still channeling his TP, so they didn't have the ability to uh, uh, turn that fight and play towards their win condition. And Nexus has blown up, uh, and that is going to be game one going towards Tufts University Blue in a solid game, um, just really showing you how powerful these team compositions are with these tank items, with all this crowd control coming out. Really, really great job coming from Tufts as they pick up game one, um, a victory for themselves here for the Jumbos. It's going to be a tough ask for Lehigh to try and turn this around, go for that reverse sweep. We're going to come back with game two action right after this. We'll see you in Champ Select. Welcome back, guys. We are back here with Game 2 coverage coming in from Tufts against Lehigh. Week 4 of the CSL and Adi. Um, that was a pretty crazy Game 1 from Tufts, showing how powerful these tanks can be uh, in this new And season. like I kind of uh, talked about it towards the end of that game, uh, tank meta. Not looking forward to that one, but uh, we got to see uh, the strength of it with... Uh, like you were talking about a lot, the raw crowd control they have, as well as those really powerful items. I think, how many of the uh, Sunfire Cape, Sunfire Cape uh, Mythic items do we see? At least uh, three, I think, from the side of Tufts. So, yeah, they're really showcasing uh, how strong that item is and how strong the champions that use them are. And um, definitely, uh, the Malphite Yasuo was had some semblance of uh, hope for the side of Lehigh, but at the end, they weren't able to use it well enough in those 5v5s uh, after that first dragon fight, and uh, 
Toss was able to get a pretty big lead. The Victor was able to get strong and also the Zanyas and Moonspeed items to be safe. And they were able to get a pretty clean victory towards the end there. Game 2 champ select is about to go underway. As we said before, it's going to be Lehigh switching over to that blue side and Tufts going to red. It's going to be interesting to see how that kind of, you know, switches things up here in this draft. Adi, is there anything you want to take a look at here um, for Tufts or Lehigh trying to adapt um, um, after that game one? Yeah, I, would, I want to see a little more uh, tank meta from uh, Lehigh. They tried to go for the anti-tank with the Trundle and the Morgana, and uh, it really did not play out well enough because while the Trundle and Morgana were strong into the comp, the Caitlyn was just kind of a sitting dog, as we saw with that massive uh, taunt towards the end there from uh, Easy Life, uh, you know, getting a really clean kill on to Caitlyn. So uh, I would like to uh, see them, you know, try to go a little bit more towards that uh, tanky style and uh, again this is just like a one uh, a one case we've seen with uh, the uh, tank meta so I might just be overhyping it a little bit but uh, the way Tufts brought it out uh, made it seem really strong. About the so Malphite Yasuo, I thought it was I thought it, like it had some semblances like I said before uh, they were able to get some nice picks in the top lane but uh, I, I don't know, if they clean up those fights a little bit, maybe get that communication a little better like we saw in that uh, last fight, uh, they might be able to pull it out for a win, but other than that, I would like to you know, see them uh, change it up a bit. Speaking of changing it up a bit, some early adaptation coming out from Lehigh as we start this draft off. Victor and Sejuani being taken away from Morn and Argentine Import. Ash is going to stay the same from Jansu. Still going to be thinking that that's a really strong pickup for the Jumbos as uh, Adi, you said it and it came. The two early bans against Tufts from the team, team comp that they already played. And um, Victor was just really strong uh, from Argentina for He piloted that very well, was able to stay in the back, get a lot of consistent damage down, and uh, really shred through the high there. So uh, I really respect the bans there. And uh, yeah. Leona first pick, and look at this. Kha'Zix is available for Morn in this first rotation. It's going to be really uh, cool to see if he picks it up or if maybe he opts for more of the tanks once again. Maybe something like that, a Moo Moo or, or even um, something like Zac. I don't know really exactly what Morn has in his champ pool and what he has in mind, but it's going to be Leona first pick once again going towards Hansun and Tufts with this first pick is going to pick up the Jin for themselves, Johnson. And the Shen is also uh, available again. and. Uh... Like we saw, Easy Life had a really good performance on that Shen, you know, showing why it's uh, one of his comfort picks. So I'd be excited to see them pick that up again. But yeah, I'm interested to see what um, Morin goes for this time. I think he had such a good performance on the tank members. I think that's why Lehigh is uh, leaving it up, just because uh, they expect uh, something like the uh, Sejuani or like you're saying, Amumu or Zac to be a lot more prevalent. Last game, we saw the Leona being um, responded to with something like the Morgana, something that can counter that crowd control. But it looks like Tufts is going to fight fire with fire here, going for this Nautilus pickup. Meanwhile, we see Ezreal actually picked up an interesting um, case here with Ezreal as Kha'Zix is actually going to be stolen away from Lehigh picking that one up. One thing I do want to mention though, Kha'Zix is going to be able to be countered by some of these high tank junglers like Mundo, Amumu, or even Ramis. So it's going to be really crucial to see what Morn picks up here to finish off this first edition. Uh, however, we did see, uh, I think either uh, last week or the week before, the Kha'Zix and against that Jin, you know, able to get in the back line and um, you know, pick him off really easily, meaning there wasn't much damage left for uh, Tufts. However, Tufts decided to go with the Lee Sin this time, which will definitely be very interesting into the Kha'Zix. And it's going to be Lee Sin picked up for Morn. I, this is super exciting. I have not seen uh, Morn on Lee Sin yet, but definitely a bit of a change from his typical playstyle and going for something a bit more early game focused, a bit more aggressive. I'm super excited to see this lead. Yeah, I think the Lee Sin is definitely a very interesting pick. Uh, I, you know, haven't seen too much of how Lee Sin has been playing out this patch, but there is the item with the control wards, which uh, I think might be very interesting for Lee Sin as it allows him to ward hop a ton, you know? And, uh, uh, the box box fanboy I am uh, saw box box testing out the uh, lethality item that lets you dash with the Lee Sin. So maybe if Morn tries to go for that, we could see some cool insect plays. 
Second fans phase of bands about to finish up here. We see Yasuo and Shen be taken away. Both were power picks in that game one. So we're gonna see a different champ and for Easy Life and for the mid laner here for Lehigh. Cassidy being taken away again as well for Tufts as the Mordekaiser is the final ban here in this game too. Yeah, and with the um with the uh Shen banned out and the Lee Sin uh, Jin already picked Jin. Sorry, Lee Sin Jin Echo picked up from Tufts. I'm expecting something to be a little more tanky from the side of uh, Easy Life. It's gonna be Echo locked in for Argentine. I'm super excited to see this. Argentine import is super, super good uh, on this Echo, and it's gonna be really, it's gonna be a show actually to watch him on such a broken champion here in this patch. Um, Echo has been um, one of the victors here from a lot of these item changes and I'm really excited to see how he responds with these mythics. It's going to be Cassiopeia Orn to finish off this game. For and Orn's also a really interesting one with the new items because now he upgrades mythic items. So uh, we're going to see uh, how he ends up uh, playing out with the mythic item upgrades. Uh, yeah, the Echo is definitely very interesting. Uh, I have played a ton of Echo back in the day and um, he's definitely one of my uh, favorite picks, but uh, I'll be interested to see how he builds now, which because he used to abuse the uh, protobelt, the 2600 gold, really cheap, really fast item spike with a ton of burst damage to, you know, get an early lead. But now the protobelt is one of the mythic items and it's pretty expensive. So I'll see how he ends up uh, itemizing because my instinct says that the, uh, the rocket belt, sorry, it's called now, will still be uh, good enough, but we'll see. No pun intended, but it's going to be Easy Life going back to his roots here with that Maokai lock in. The tree up in the top lane going to be super impactful as another one of these tanks that benefits heavily off of these new mythic items. Looking at these team comps from Tufts, I see a lot of um, burst damage, not a lot of DPS necessarily, but I think all the CC and all of the burst onto these champions like the Ezreal, like the Kha'Zix, will do the trick for them in this game. And, uh... As we uh, start going over to the normal champ select, um, looking at these team comps, uh, it seems Tufts is going for a little more of the dive with the Lisa and the Echo, versus Lehigh is playing a little more towards the like, damage carries with the Ezreal and the Cassiopeia. However, they also have that Kha'Zix, so it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, this, this comp is a little bit more um, on Lehigh. A little bit more, I would say, well-rounded. You got a lot of heavy DPS backliners in the Cassiopeia and the Ezreal. Got one diver here for Kha'Zix, and you got the Leona and Orn to try and tank up the carries. It's going to be super interesting to see how that turns out. Um, Kha'Zix is an interesting pickup here. I would have expected more to go for a bit of a more tanky pickup to try and counter that Kha'Zix um, in the top, in the jungle. But going for something like this Lee means that he's trying to go aggressive for some of these plays early on in this game. Yeah, and... Uh... I think it's definitely going to be uh, on the Lee Sin to try to get ahead because I think although there is a decent amount of scaling on the side of Tufts, I think Lee Hydra scales a lot harder with the Orn, with the Cassiopeia, with the Ezreal. Uh, it's going to uh, there's going to be a clock for uh, Tufts to close out this game. Yeah, definitely more early game focus. We do have some of the um, late game insurance in this Maokai and Jin. Nautilus, of course, going to be super valuable no matter where you are in this game given all that crowd control um, but yeah certainly more a lot of good scaling with this mythic items with the new ornaments gonna be in play here for um, sorry for Xiphias and it's gonna be um, <laughs> really interesting to see how this interactions work they have kind of equalized the mythic items try the ornaments will give it about a 1,000 gold increase for each champion so or later on in the game that's gonna be a, basically a 5k gold lead um, just inherently available for the hunt. And uh, one thing about the Echo is, like you said, he is like relatively strong with these new items, but it takes him a little bit longer to uh, get that spike, uh, about 600 gold longer. So we'll uh, see if he'll still have like a similar impact because uh, uh, a little bit of history of Echo. Echo has gone. Echo is one of those champions, you know, back in the day where he had a ton of base damage, and you know, you take him top, build, build like Iceberg Garland and stuff, you know. Uh, the AP Assassins back in like what, season 6 or whatever. So uh, Riot decided to move a lot of his damage into scaling, which makes him not as good early game, but a lot uh, stronger when he starts hitting items. So when Protobelt came out, he became really good with Protobelt as he got a little bit of that extra damage from the Protobelt to uh, you know accelerate him into the game and uh, allow him to have a lot of one-shot potential as soon as he hits that spike. So now that he has to wait a little longer, we'll see... Uh, 
uh, how Echo's play style changes a bit. There's always so much to talk about whenever a draft comes up here in preseason. It seems like every champion has some sort of new, like, special interaction that we want to talk about. Unfortunately, we are about to go into a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have game two action between Lehigh University Phoenix and Tufts University Blue right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you on the Rift.
Wait, do I play? Um, hello and welcome back to JumboCast coverage of the CSL League of Legends tournament. Here we got Tufts University versus Lehigh University Phoenix. Um, here Tufts on the red side, Lehigh on blue. Once again, I'm Andrew Howe, joined by Adi Palparik. Adi, we got an incredible game set up here for the Jumbos. Um, uh, trying to, with that 1-0 lead, trying to pull up a sweep here in this week four. Yeah, uh, they're uh, going for a little bit of a different comp from both sides. It'll be really interesting to see. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, we overhyped the or we hyped the uh, tank meta a lot last uh, time, and there are some, you know, tanks picked up this time, but definitely a lot less. So we'll see how it uh, plays out. Uh, we actually have double tier start on the side of uh, Lehigh. It's very interesting. Uh, you know, I I think that the, uh, Doran's Blade is usually what I would go for Ezreal here uh, because I feel like you kind of need some of those stats, but tier does have the extra damage to minion, so. Maybe that's enough to uh, warrant a tier start from Ezreal. Um, yeah, so tier start, uh, once again, tier of the goddess is now 400 gold. Um, different, A little bit different, which means you can able to, you're able to pick it up early. Something that is a little bit different, though, does not provide the same amount of mana um, as the previous tier did. But um, still going to be interesting to see what happens. We're going to see top side starts for both of these junglers to start the same way. Yeah, and... Uh... Another thing I want to talk about is uh, Jiansu's build. He has opted for the Dark Harvest again, meaning that he will probably be going for that Lethality Mythic item, but I want to see if he ends up going for the Edge Knight again, because, again, that gives a little bit more safety, but you definitely have a little bit less damage with the not without the crit uh, strike chance you have uh, from the Collector. Yeah, um, we didn't see the Collector um, picked up for Jiansu in that last game. It will be interesting to see if he gets it here. Um, with a bit of a different team comp, I still think this crowd control is really high. But an early level 2 picked up for Argentine Import, he's going to go for an aggressive play. Electric had already popped onto QC, and that's really big to start off this um, game for the Echo. Yeah, and as I mean, Echo just gets super strong with the level 2, but when uh, Cassiope gets that W, the Miasma, uh, it will make it really hard for Echo to have the same kind of dominance. So we'll see if uh, Argentine Import can uh, usually uh, can uh, get a pretty big lead before then, or if. Uh, Cassiope is going to be able to get back into this lane. So far, has healed up a fair amount using one of those potions to get himself get to get himself back um, to full. We're going to see top side already completed um, um, for Lehigh, while um, Morn is still working his way through early on. Time Warp Tonic picked up for Ardent Import um, for some extra sustain as well as the minion materializers. Yeah, and uh, you see the um, the miasma there, uh, you know, making. Putting the slow, making it so uh, the echo. Oh, big trades back and forth. Sorry to interrupt you, Audi, but that's first blood going over to Zippius. Orange damage is too strong early game. We're using that grass, using those autos, using that crowd control to pick up a kill onto Easy Life to start this game off. Yeah, and uh, Easy Life will be able to TV back in, you know, get that wave, but still pretty big for the uh, Orin. Uh, really nice first blood picked up by him. Oh, but is this a trade back? We see uh, um, Arcane Smash used from Easy Life has a grasp again. The sapling is going to slow him down. One more Q will probably take him down. But here comes Lehigh. He's going to flash in to try and finish him off. Easy Life's going to pick up Xiphias, but he's going to die in return. Going to try to use the W to get away, but not going to be it. Lehigh picks up a kill in return. It's going to be two for one to start this game off with less than four minutes to start this one off. Yeah, and although Easy Life was able to get that kill on the backside, that's brutal for him because he's missing like another half wave there. So, uh... I think the Orin is definitely going to be very happy with uh, how that turned out. Yeah, the Orin obviously um, on this champion that already scales so well. Any advantage early on just means that you're going to be getting to that power spike even faster. Already has two Ruby Crystals through his name. Almost at that crucial Bami Cinder pickup. A nice use of the Miasma here. Poison is actually taking out the Argentine. That's going to be the end of him. Kyosi with one more auto will pick up a kill onto the, onto the Echo. Make it two as Morn tries to go aggressive as well and cast... Constantine is forced to run for his life, but with this blue buff, Kuse is doing a lot of damage on this Cassio and a brilliant way to start this one off for Lehigh. Yeah, and, uh, that's what I was talking about. You know, when Cassiopeia hits that Miasma, it's really hard for the Echo to deal with. And uh, yeah, it just puts down the Miasma again, you know, for that extra uh, security. And um, that goes just to uh, back off again. Uh, that ability as a ex Echo oh. is one of my least favorite, but. Uh, a little bit of a greedy back. 
<laughs> yeah, way Good too job. far forward for Kuse. Argentine import will gladly and easily pick up a kill for himself in return. Still has an 11 CS lead, but with two kills going over to Cassio, this is big. We see another E, a nice job onto Easy Life, and that's going to be Lehi coming in as well. One more Q will do it. Make that the auto, actually. Lehi is going to pick up his second kill of the game. Now 2 0 and 1 with another kill going down onto the knockdown. This, uh, they're playing really well around this top side, you know, Kalix is going around, hovering around there, uh, using the crowd control from the Orin to get some pretty free kills onto this Maokai, so, yeah, really good start from Lehigh here. Already at a 1.3k gold lead, this Orin is gonna be strong, as well as the top, so, so far the top side of the map for um, Lehigh is just doing really, really well for themselves. Um, uh, and props to Lehigh, um, the jungler, and I wanna say. Um, using so much of his early advantages and pressure, something that Morn hasn't really been able to do just yet, um, and really taking advantage of that and getting a bunch of early kills for the team. Yeah, and uh, he's not only ahead on kills, but he also had really ahead on farm. And uh, we saw Leeson trying to go something, go for something early, you know, uh, use that early game advantage to uh, get a kill in mid lane, but he was there too late, and Argentine Import went to engage. Um, Really early, got uh, melted down by the Miasma and the uh, E from Cassiopeia, and uh, it just did not amount to anything. Well, it did amount to something, just not a positive thing for Tus. Level 6 hit for Argentine, and he immediately goes aggressive onto Kusei with that Chrono Break available, um, tr trying to do as much damage as he can and zoning off this Cassio from the lane. We see a bit of an aggressive roam up top from Constantine and Morn. Maybe looking for the dragon, or maybe looking for a kill onto this onto the snake without any summoners. Let's see what Kha'Zix happens. See a three-man gank here. That's going to be the flash auto used with the, the petrifying gaze. Will get two, but that's not going to be enough. That's going to be a dead Cassie. Meanwhile, on the top side, it is once again Lehi coming up, and Xiphius will pick up the kill for himself. Four deaths already for the tree. Not what you want to start this game off. Yeah, and I like the direction uh, Tufts is going right now. Uh, they're sacrificing the uh, Maokai in the top lane, trying to get those kills on the Echo, because while e Echo does scale a decent amount, so if they're trying to get back in this game, Echo is definitely uh, one avenue for them to do it. And while they're doing that, they're also putting the Cassiopeia further behind. So uh, I really like uh, how they're uh, playing around this game. And uh, we've seen um, Easy Live put on Maokai uh, weak side duty before and uh, put really far behind and still be relevant to the Ross he has. So we'll see how this ends up uh, playing out. Argentine does not have a point at the ultimate. I don't know how that happened. Level 7 does not have it available, and he ends up falling as a result of that. And that's going to be the TP coming in from Xiphias to try and counter this uh, dragon play for Tufts. And that's going to be two kills already as Jansu falls. Dragon picked up big, big plays coming out of Lehigh University Phoenix. Yeah, and um, the cause is just, just so strong with the... Uh, uh... 201 before that fight started out, and like I said, Archon Import did not have the ultimate, and so uh, pretty uh, free kill for the Kha'Zix, and they were able to uh, have the Warren TP down and uh, pick up that drag. And uh, I really like that play because they were able to use that lead they had in the top side with the jungler in the top lane to, uh, you know, shut down the uh, dragon stacking that Tufts was going to try to go for this game. And this is almost unheard of. I mean. I saw I saw the ultimate wasn't unlocked for Argentine as he hit six going in for a trade onto Kusei. Um but I thought that it might might have been like oh he just forgot to level it up. But he still doesn't have that shadow and hitting level eight, still not having that ultimate leveled up. He actually just has um no skills leveled. Maybe it's a bit of a visual bug, but he has four points in Q and one in W and E. Um don't really know what's going on on our the side of Argentine. Um, echo here, um, but it really hurt him um, with that death early on. Uh, I'm looking at it and I see uh, four uh, four points in the Q, two points in the E, one point in the W, and zero points in the ultimate. So I'm assuming that's a visual bug because he only has yeah. seven points level total. Uh, yeah, I guess it is just a visual bug as we see the Chrono, ship, Chrono Break used to try and stun up Yusei. One more phase dive will do it, and that's going to be the kill. But in return, going to be Yusei picking one up for himself too. It's going to be the junglers in the mid lane, but Lehi has a two-level lead onto this cause, onto this Lee Sin. Sorry, one more Q, and the Flash isolate will not save you from that isolated damage coming out of Kha'Zix. This cause is super huge as Lehi has now four kills for himself. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Easy Life might get soloed up as if he is going to be forced to flash under his tower to save his life. And that is not what you want to see early on um, uh, in this Orn versus Maokai. Lehi just feels like they can do whatever they want in this game so far. Yeah, Kha'Zix is really taking over this game. He's, he's really strong. He actually hasn't even backed to get his items yet. Uh, he's sitting on 
pull two, wow. uh, two and a half K gold in his uh, left to use when he goes back, and uh, he's getting a lot of pressure, a ton of farm, and um, you know, really getting a lot of leads for Lehigh right now. Ten minutes into this game, and already a 2.7k gold lead for Lehigh. They're gonna pick up the Rift Herald as well. This Kha'Zix is super strong, gonna try and back soon, or maybe he won't. Maybe he looks like there's gonna be pings going towards that top side. And Easy Life, if I were you, I would get out of there really soon, because you might be in for a whole world of trouble. Yeah, and um... I haven't seen uh, Taos play around this bot lane a lot, which I think is interesting. Like, I like the, I like them showing around the mid lane, but how many times have you seen Kha'Zix at the top lane? It seems like Taos is not responding, you know, proportionally. And it looks like that's going to be another dive onto Easy Life. Uh, that's going to probably be the kill. The flash Q from Lehigh will finish him off. Five kills now on this Kha'Zix, and Easy Life is getting chopped down over and over again. Morn looking for an aggressive play to try and steal the Raptors. But he's definitely going to get punished for that. Hansen with the Solar Flare. He's going to pick up a kill for himself as well. And with the Rift Herald there, a huge lead in the top lane, a huge lead over all four and a half thousand gold in favor of the Phoenix. Um, that was a bit grief from uh, Morn. Uh, his entire team was running away. Uh, obviously, he didn't know there was a ward in that bush, but um, the mid laner and support were right around the corner. And uh, it seems they were just trying to get whatever they can for the uh, uh, onslaught that's going on in the top lane. Yeah, the onslaught is putting it lightly, honestly, at this point. We're going to see an aggressive play from Argentine because he knows that Constantine is here as well to back him up. Zuman and John Stu are kind of just trading back and forth so far. Um, looks like we're going to see. Um, oh, actually, really weird. We see the Phage and Sheen picked up for um, Suman. I don't know if that builds into something like the Divine Sunderer instead of the Triforce. It's going to be really interesting to see what he ends up picking up there. That's pretty interesting because now Triforce uh, builds out of another item that gives movement speed uh, on autos, but it's not the Phage. Oh, so. that's going to be a dead uh, Q we'll save. One more hit from the Curtain Call will do it, and that's going to be a dead mid laner. Yeah, good job trying to uh, play around that uh, mid lane, you know, shut down that Cassiopeia. Oh my god! Lehigh is such a monster right now. Double kill already as he picks up a kill onto Argentine and Constantine as well. Nah, man, my goodness. This Kha'Zix is huge. Um, no sign of this bug getting squashed just yet as 7, 0, and 3, 1,000 gold bounty. And with this Cloud Dragon spawn, it's going to be probably going to be a 2 0 drag lead going over to Lehigh. I forget what I said about tank meta. It's assassin meta now. <laughs> Man, Getting he got deleted. Yeah. Auto Q and Echo was just gone. I don't even know if that was isolated damage or not because like there were a bunch of chance. Our Constantine was kind of nearby. Either way, that's just so much damage coming out. The dust blade providing that extra invisibility as well. It's gonna be the second dragon of the game picked up for Lehigh. As I said, it's gonna be Ocean Dragon spawning here, and with a lot of these members of these teams here for Lehigh, it's gonna be super valuable soul if they are able to get it. Yeah, and uh, Ezreal, interestingly, is uh, opting for that Divine Sunderer now, which I think is pretty interesting because uh, it does more uh, max health damage than the tri Triforce, which just does like base damage with the Sheen procs. And it also uh, gives more ability haste, 80, and health at the uh, cost of not giving uh, attack speed. So, very interesting to see um, uh, which one is going to be better as we get uh, past the preseason. But, um, I honestly like this a little more than the Triforce because I think it's a tiny bit cheaper and uh, it gives more of the stats that the Ezreal actually wants. So. And the Sunder will also make you a lot tankier on this Ezreal. Something I have seen um, recently is just going for like a really tanky Ezreal build. With the Muramana as well. And you get something like Sterix um, into like Titanic Hydra and it's just super strong on the Ezreal. It can be able to dish out lots of damage tanky and also tank up a lot of hits. So. It's going to be interesting to see. Ezreal is always one of those champions where the builds just kind of go all over the place for a large part to start the season off. But either way, it looks like he's going to be super far ahead as Lehigh have amassed a 5,000 gold for themselves only 14 minutes into this game. I want to talk about something you uh, mentioned right there. The Titanic Hydra on Ezreal, because now you can actually build Hydras on uh, ranged champions. And not only does it proc off of the ranged auto attacks, it also procs off of ranged abilities. So. Definitely is an um, interesting one that can be picked up. I've definitely seen the Ravenous Hydra picked up for the Ezreal, and uh, like you're saying, the Titanic Hydra. So we'll uh, see how uh, 
We'll see how he decides to itemize, but uh, it seems with the Caulfield's Warhammer and the uh, Pierre, he's going to try to finish up that mirror mana really quickly. Argentine and Morn looking for a bit of a pick on the Hansi, and that's going to be it. One kill picked up for Tusk, but there's the TP coming in, and that's going to be Lehi jumping into the backline. Chrono Break already used, and that's going to be called the Forge God. Sifius is looking for Jansu, and he finds him. That's going to be the Flash E to try and get that Brittle proc in, and Jansu is running for his life. Looks like Sifius might have gone a little bit too far, though. The Root's going to finish him off, and that's going to be a shutdown from Argentine Import. Curtain Call has opened up. This could be the turnaround that Tusk needs. A huge petrifying gaze coming out of Tuesday. This could be big for Lehi. Stopwatch already used on the Constantine, that's going to be dead Argentine. Morn is going to come in and finish a kill off onto the Cassiopeia, and it's going to be a 2v3 right now. A crit finishes off this Lehigh, the bug has been squashed finally, and one more will do it. That's going to be Ezreal dead, the ace, delayed ace coming out from the Jumbos, and a really great play for them to try and turn this game around. Yeah, a really good uh, play from uh, Tufts. Uh, it seems like they were being a little aggressive, all standing in that Miasma and the ulti. Uh, Echo kind of like sitting there not being able to do much as he is grounded, but... Uh, they were able to get enough damage out on the bug, and uh, the Jin, who was sitting there completely untouched, was able to clean up that fight, and uh, now they're sitting in a really good position. Uh, the gold lead is only about 2k now, and uh, the carries from the side of Tufts are getting pretty strong, so we, um, we suddenly have a game on our hands. Yeah, suddenly we do have a game. It's 2,000 gold now. Swindling from 5,000 to 2k in just one fight. And speaking of which, Jansu um, was kind of quiet early on to start this game. I think was sitting at around like 0 1 1 or something. And after that, sitting now at 3 1 and 3, 3 kills for himself. Um, it's definitely going to be a strong Jin. Lehigh has caught out Constantine though. Actually opted for the W, um, w upgrade there. Um, going for those spikes, the AoE, those slows. Definitely super important. Yeah, and um, looking at Jansu's inventory, it seems like he will be uh, going for that edge tonight again instead of the collector, so uh, very interesting. And uh, it seems like there's a little bit of a visual bug with uh, Nautilus. I don't know if that's on your guys' screen as well, but he appears to be levitating. <laughs> um, don't see that, actually, but <laughs> I, I think I know what yeah. bug you're talking about, and it's kind of funny that it's occurring. Yeah, right, spaghetti code, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's going to be the turret picked up bottom lane. Kusei still going to be really strong. He does have a couple of deaths, too many maybe, but sitting pretty evenly with uh, Argentine import in terms of gold. We're going to see the dragon spawning in less than 25 seconds. And it's going to be a key dragon. Tufts definitely does not want to give up soul point this early on in the game. But um, still, we do see Lehi with this gold lead, with this fed Kha'Zix, as well as like something like the Orn. going to be super super scary to try and contest this and it looks like um, it's gonna be a fight and um, you can see uh, mostly everyone has their uh, mythic items completed just the supports uh, waiting to complete those ones and uh, cause is gonna drop the rift herald in the mid lane a uh, classic move uh, around these uh, dragon skirmishes and uh, his teams are both setting up Lehi has been caught out though he's gonna use the leap to try and get away but curtain call has already been used that's gonna be one that's not, not two though, Death Charge has been used, but look at the back line! That's gonna be a huge turnaround as it looks like Tusk tried to go too hard for the Kha'Zix and they are going to be punished for that. Four already dead, naked five, a huge play coming out of Lehigh. Did not see that coming, but Miasma, as well as the Petrifying Gaze from Kusei and the Orin and everything, just wipes Tufts off the map. They get the Ace and Soul Point. Yeah, and they just really found Tufts uh, sitting in that corner. Uh... The Leona ulti plus Orn ulti were able to like keep him sitting, and the AOE from the Cassiopeia was able to help them. That, that was that was a crazy wombo combo there coming out of Lehigh. Once again, call of the Forge God, Petrifying Gaze, Solar Flare, True Shot Barrage, all of it. It looks like um, Ka Ka looks like Lehigh um, on the Kha'Zix was a bit of a bug on on the end of the fishing pole there, trying to bait the Tufts in to try and corral them into the wombo combo and it worked out perfectly. Nobody on the side of Lehigh died and they are back to a 7, 6,000, sorry, gold lead for themselves. Yeah, and um, they were able to turn that into a drag. So they're actually sitting on a 3-0 dragon lead. So this uh, dragon soul is definitely going to be a big win condition. But like we talked about earlier, they have the scaling advantage. The Cassiopeia and Ezreal are definitely going to, uh, with the Orn, definitely going to uh, put them out into a bit of a lead, especially with uh, the Kha'Zix against the Lee Sin matchup, where Kha'Zix definitely outscales. We're approaching the 20 minute mark. Once again, Lehigh is certainly in a really good at 
of spot here for themselves. Looking at the items here, really interesting. We see the locket picked up for Hansen. In the last game, we saw Sunfire Aegis from Constantine on this Leona, going more for the um, gold efficiency, I guess, and more of the supportish um, build um, on Leona here for Hansen, instead of going for the additional selfish tankiness in the Aegis, which Nautilus is going for actually right now. And honestly, uh, the uh, Lee Sin decided to go for um, some more lethality items, and uh... I'm gonna be honest, I would prefer to see some more tank, given the fact that he's three levels down and, uh, you know, it's not gonna. The damage is never gonna really be there for Lee Sin, so I think he would like to just uh, sit there and heal for the two carries. Yeah, has that Eclipse Mythic picked up? Does have a Kindle Gem in inventory, though. Could be a sign of him going a little bit more tanky. We will see where that build ends up going. But for Tufts, they are sitting in a bit of a crate, uh, a bit of a disadvantaged spot, and with these kind of more early game focused champions, like. Um, the Lee Sin already available without having this early game lead. It's going to be a lot harder for Tufts to try and make their comeback here with only um, with a more early game focus team. Now. Yeah, and if you look at the tier stacks on the side of uh, Lehigh, they're about to complete those, which is going to be really massive for them as they uh, come into these uh, fights. Looks like Argentine's going for an aggressive play on the Qsay, does not actually get the Z Drive Resonance stacks to finish off, and that looks like Qsay is going to be. Coming back here, Argentine looks like he's going to be in a bit of trouble using the ultimate to try and get away. But that's going to be the Q. The burn is ticking. One more will do it. That's going to be Qsay on a rampage with a solo kill onto Argentine in for it. Meanwhile, in the bottom side, we're going to see Lehigh go in 3v1. One more crit will do it. That's going to be a shutdown. A huge one at that going over towards John Super. Here comes the rest of the fight. Call the Forge God is going to land onto two. And that's going to be Suman picking up the kill on the Constantine as well as John Super falling. Easy life in the middle of the enemy team. 4v1. He might be able to survive, but he won't be able to take any of them down. That's going to be another four for zero oh sorry four for one coming out from lehigh and they are going to baron with their eyes set on that big purple buff after this fight yeah and i think um i kind of wish argentine import didn't go for that fight like i like the idea you seem like you have a lot of damage but cassiopeia is massive right now and uh i feel like the echo might have been able to turn the fight with some of that aoe on the back end because they were able to get the pick on uh Lehigh, but just the chains you see with the Leona, the Orn, and the Cassiopeia were able to lock him down and do so much damage without any threat of uh, their own backline getting dove on. Baron picked up already. That's going to be a ten, uh, sorry, 8,000 gold lead for the Phoenix. A really, 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 really good start for them early on in this one. With Dragon spawning in less than a minute, with, that means that the Baron buff will still be available as Lehigh goes for this early Ocean Soul. So Tufts is going to really have to work out some sort of miracle to avoid this big buff coming both ways towards Lehigh. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, Baron plus Ocean might just be enough to uh, end this game, you know. A lot of uh, big completed items for the side of... Uh, for the side of Lehigh, and they're uh, getting to the point where Orn's gonna start upgrading those. So it's gonna be, if there is a comeback uh, that can potentially come, it's gonna be a really steep hill. Lehigh looks like he might have gotten caught out a little bit. Constantine is here, but he has the ultimate. That Void Assault is gonna be buying some time, but not enough. Four, five members, sorry, four members of Tufts going on to that um, Cosmix, and they squash the bug. That's gonna be in the kill going on to Lehigh, and with that, it looks like Tufts might now have the upper hand to try and go for this drag, save the soul for themselves. That is exactly what they needed here, and I don't know if Lehigh can go for a 4v5. I mean, they kind of did, because Lehigh um, didn't really do that much damage in that last ace around the dragon, but it looks like they're not going to try and contest. Instead, it looks like they're going towards the base. Yeah, and uh, they have the inside track there with the Baron buff, which means they're probably going to be able to get at least an inhib off this. Oh, but it seems like Tufts is going for the reset. They're going to try to uh, flank him from the back. Yeah, instead of going for the backs, it looks like they're going for the back door. Nature's Grasp has been used from Easy Life, and they're going to try and try and find some picks. Unfortunately, the ultimate range did not end up catching any of them with the roots. It looks like Constantine is still looking to go aggressive here, but a three-man blast going over to safety for Lehigh will make sure that they get out unarmed. And uh, it was a nice attempt from Tufts, but um, at least they were able to save the inhib with that play. Yep, ended up saving the inhib, ended up not saving the tower though, uh, but uh, once again, you delay the soul, you get the pick onto the Kha'Zix, get some nice gold for yourself, and once again, it looks like Lehigh is kind of trying to take this one a little bit slower. They have, still have the 7,500 gold lead, but it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get any inhibitors off this Baron power play. Yeah, and um, Tufts is uh, stalling this out a little bit, but like we've said time and time again, oh. you know, 
Looks like Lehigh might be caught out once again. He's still three levels above Morn, but I don't know if he's going to be able to survive. But it looks like it might be a turn on Flash. Petrifying Gaze coming out from Kusei. That's going to be two members down at a bit of an overextension from the Jumbos. And now with this Baron buff still available, looks like Lehigh is going to be going for some base taking push here. Yeah, um, it just seems like they're just using the Kha'Zix as bait over and over again, you know? Uh, the slipperiness from his E and his ultimate, plus the fact that he's like so far ahead means that he can kind of, you know, soak up some damage, you know, uh, get the toughs to overextend, and then just the wombo combo from the from Lehigh just means they get to uh, clean up on the backside, and uh, teams are going to try to go for the win here. Inhibitor already down, the death timers are too long, that's going to be Jansu, Constantine, and Easy Life under fire, two dead, one more to fall, Amorn is back, but what can he even do? Two under the turret, you see five members of the Phoenix wiping the members of Tufts, that's going to be only Argentine import left, going to try to do some miracle play with the Chrono Blake, but not going to be able to do it. The stopwatch will save his life for a couple more seconds, but that's going to be the ace coming out from Lehigh, and a nice response coming out of Tufts, they come back with a great um, win and end up even in the series taking us to a game deciding game three Yeah, and um, We saw there, you know, Kha'Zix is good for more than just the bay uh, one-shotting the uh, Jin right there and um, You know leading to a really decisive win uh, I feel like the composition from Lehigh was just really strong, you know picking the Ezreal uh, to you know have that safety have a little bit of backline damage uh, with the Cassiopeia into the Echo, uh, they just drafted really well and were able to execute really well with that Kha'Zix and Orin in the top lane, then uh, lead themselves to a pretty nice win. Yeah, it looked like it was a bit of um, uh, a bit of um, some spec, um, some early game snowballing that was not really able to be controlled at the end of that, and that is going to be Lehigh evening up this series in a dominant game to win. And for Tufts, they're going to have to make some adjustments to try and take this series, one that they desperately need to stay alive in the CSL playoffs. We're going to see if they're going to be able to do it in the next game. We're going to come back with Champ Select right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to Game 3, the final and deciding game here in CSL Week 4 between Tufts University Blue and the Lehigh University Phoenix. I am Andrew Howe, joined here once again with Adi, by Al, Adi Pal Parik. And Adi, this is, we're in for an exciting final game as both teams have taken big, strong victories early on to start the series off. We saw uh, two really good performances for both teams, and like you were kind of talking about before, this is a really important uh, game for both teams, you know, if they're uh, trying to uh, secure a spot in the playoffs. So it's definitely a lot riding on this one. So see how it plays out. You know, going to the draft, we've kind of seen different style comps, um, and we've seen like four different style comps, you know. We saw the tank, anti-tank, the... Uh, preserve the carry and the diving early game comps, you know, pulled out. And um, I'm interested to see uh, what each team decides to go for. I think the, the they both uh, they both had like really strong performances, like you said, uh, on uh, one, of, one of those. Uh, the tank comp from uh, Tufts in game one with the, uh, and the uh, preserve the carry comp in game two from Lehigh, so we're interested to see how they decided to shift things up in this last game. Draft has begun. We're going to see Maskey and Olaf being taken away from Tuss, with Victor Sejuani taken away from Lehigh. Lehigh still scared of that Victor Sejuani combo from game one. He's going to make sure that the Jumbo don't pick it up now that they're back on the blue side. Yeah, uh, Tuss definitely has uh, first pick, and so it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what they decided to do with this first pick this time. Uh, obviously they didn't, can't do Victor Sejuani because those things were banned, but Kha'Zix also taken away, so uh, we saw Lehigh uh, have a really dominating performance, but now that Tufts has the first pick, they don't want uh, Morn to uh, bring that one out. Leona is still on the table, Jin is still on the table. Even something as even something that we haven't really seen, like a Mundo uh, or a Mundo still on the table for Tufts, a lot to the figure out what they want to do here with this first pick and an interesting change of events is going to be born picking up the Lilia for himself in the jungle and Lehigh is going to respond with that with Leona and probably going to be Ash. Ash is obviously a strong pick as well utility. Like I mentioned before, it's not turbo broken with Ginza's Rage Blade. They did patch fix that so we can all uh, rest easy knowing that uh, she can't get the 200 on hit damage, the double, uh, the uh, uh, double on hit effects plus normal crit damage, but uh, still going to be a really good pick. And it's going to be locked in for Lehigh. It's going to be the Ashley on a bottling. Lots of crowd control, lots of slows, lots of stuns, lots of everything. Jin is going to be the response coming out from John, so he's going to be playing his third Jin game of the day. And with Constantine, going to be going back to something he's really comfortable on, something that we haven't really seen from him recently, though. That's going to be the Rakan. Yeah, and. Uh, I think I kind of like the shift uh, over to the Lilia from the from Morin because last game he picked an early game uh, gank jungler, got pretty far behind in that first uh, mid lane skirmish, and so uh, he wasn't able to do much. But now with the um, like really power farming Lilia with a decent amount of uh, gank potential, uh, I think uh, it would be definitely a very interesting game. The Shivana actually picked up from Lehigh. That's gonna be a very interesting pick. Yeah, definitely a different change in playstyle. Lehigh going from the Kha'Zix to something else. The Shivana going to be providing some AP threat down in the jungle. Going into the second phase of the bands, we're going to see Shen once again taken away from Easy Life as well as that Orn taken away from Zippies. Yeah, and with these new items, I don't even know which Shivana build uh, Lehigh is going to choose here. With the, I think the uh, AP is what typically people have been going for in the past season, but uh, with the item changes, I feel like the Bruiser and Tank items are also very viable for the Shivana, so really interested to see how that one's gonna uh, play out. Uh, see Shen and Orn taken away so far. Yeah, very true. Honestly, I haven't even thought of that. Normally you just associate Shivana with the Runic Echoes, E Max attacking from long range with those fireballs, and it's gonna be super um, weird to see what happens. Here. We do see a bit of a spectator bug here on the side for Lehigh. It's going to be a Mordekaiser ban being taken away. Yeah, and um, as we get into the final ban from Tufts, uh, I'm interested to see how they're going to round this up. Mid laners still uh, not picked from either side, and um, I think we're all still waiting for the top laners. So, yeah, four top side bans in this first phase of the in the second sorry phase of bans. Echo picked and locked for Lehigh. We're going to see Kusei on that champion. 
get an Argentine import a bit of a chance, uh, a bit of a uh, taste of his own medicine um, there for himself. Tufts gonna try and respond for something like that against this echo. Yeah, and uh, I'm interested to see what Argentine import is gonna respond with. Uh, maybe he will bring out the Cassiopeia as uh, it is a good counter. And the Galio, Galio picked up for Argentine import. That is very interesting. He has picked a ton of Galio in the CSL and has had, you know, uh, decent results with it. I feel like he individually has been playing Galio really well. He's been um, getting a lot of picks, getting a lot of damage down, and really contributing to early game pressure for Tufts. But in the mid to late game, I feel like Tufts as a whole has not really played around that Galio very well, leading to a lot of times uh, Galio going in, getting first damage, uh, you know. Uh, shutting someone down early, but not having any follow-up or uh, backup from his team, so just kind of a statue sitting in the middle with no cooldowns, uh, dying, so. Speaking of mid to late game, we got a Kale lock-in for Easy Life. This is going to be really cool, a huge change in playstyle from what we typically see out of Easy Life. More likely to be playing weak side on tanks, but now given an opportunity to carry on the Kale. We're going to see Lehigh pick up the Volley Bear for Zippius to try and counter that out. But Adi, what do you think of this tail pick? I think Easy Life is pretty comfortable on it, but really yeah, I mean, we saw uh, we saw uh, NYU banning out kill every game last time, and uh, maybe now we'll be able to see why. I'm excited to see uh, what Easy Life can do with this. Definitely, like you're saying, a bit of a change in playstyle as he's usually put on the top top side tank, weak, weak side uh, duty. But uh, with this kill, it'll be very interesting, and I want to see if uh, Morn especially can uh, play around this top side to try to lead to uh, uh, topside win. If there is anyone to try and counter this Kale though, it's going to be Volley Bear. Uh, once again, um, obviously Kale, super weak in that level 1 to 6 phase. And that is where a champion like Volley Bear can really shine. If he goes for maybe even a Doran's Ring, tries to put a few points in E and really go ham on this Kale early on, can really uh, send her really far behind, If uh, especially if Shivana and um, on Lehigh can kind of get up there um, for some counter gang stuff. I'm also interested to see what item Kale's gonna choose. Like, I haven't really thought about uh, what Mythic usually would go with this Kale, you know? She's not like a normal um, AP mage or uh, normal like attack speed carry, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what she chooses. And, and yeah, once again, this is a different um, playstyle that we've typically seen from Tufts. Normally we see, you know, Easy Life on a tank, we see more on, on a on like a hybrid jungler, something that we could do see right here with the Lilia. Um, but yeah, seeing Kale picked up for Easy Life, we're going to see a big heavy, um, AP heavy top side, and it's going to be on Johnson to try and provide some physical damage um, to try and counteract and balance out the damage. I think it's interesting is that with the uh, Galio and Lilia doing a lot of like uh, you know, the burst damage with the Lilia sleep plus W combo and the Galio just having, you know, big base damage plus a, a protobelt. Oh, I haven't even thought of that. Yeah, what is uh, Galio going to go for the protobelt again? But anyway, Johnson with the Dark Harvest build probably again uh, will definitely be able to clean up those fights if he's able to stay alive. Super exciting stuff here. We got game three. Once again, huge implications coming in. Lehigh actually have a chance to tie Tufts in the standings with the win here. Definitely would not be the direction Tufts would want to be going for, but they're going to have to get a win here in this game three to make sure that they can keep themselves alive in these standings, get back to 500, and get back on their feet as they move forward in the CSL. We're going to be right back with game three action here on Summoner's Rift. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you after the break. Cell standings with the game three with the item changes.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game three, our final game of the evening between Tufts University Blue and Lehigh University Phoenix. It's gonna be a big of a bang, a bit of a banger game, sorry, to try and finish off this really close three game series. Once again, I'm Andrew Howe, joined by Adi Paparik. And honestly, Adi, looking at these comps, looking at these teams, I have no idea how this one's gonna end up. Yeah, so, I mean, this is definitely a different style uh, on both sides for the kind of composition. Uh, just looking at um, how this game is turning out, you know, we have double cleanses in the bot lane, makes sense with how much pick potential there is, but uh, there's the Dark Harvest and Chilling Smite picked up by the Shivana, which is making me think this is, will be the AP Shivana again, and uh, I'm assuming it's going to be the Night Harvester, uh, a really big burst damage AP mythic item that's been, uh, you know, really popular lately, so very interested to see how that one will turn out. Um, I'm looking at Tufts, I really expecting Warren to put a lot of love into this top side because there's no way you could put this volley bear or whatever you want to kale and hope for the kale to you know be relevant coming into the mid game so we'll see how he decides to path and uh how he decides to uh play this early game out yeah you know typically we think of easy life as kind of just staying on that weak side maybe taking a death or two um but on this kale it doesn't look like Morn can really leave him out to dry. He's going to start on that bot side, work his way up top, and try and get some good stuff for himself there. It's going to see Lehigh starting in the bot side, but um, Xiphius is actually going for a bit of a fake leash up top. He's going to be starting with that Sky Splitter with the Doran's Ring, trying to get a really oppressive on to Easy Life early on. A nice trade in the mid lane as well. I think uh, overall, Galio is pretty favored in this matchup. He just has the ability to become so tanky. Uh... Uh, really wins in those like melee trades. So, see the taunt and aftershock coming out there, you know, just uh, really countering the engage from Echo. Yeah, certainly um, a bit of a good matchup early for the Echo, at least, as wow. Z Drive Resonance with the phase dive, everything, doing so much damage early on with that electrocute. Argentine Import will definitely have a lot of agency to do a lot of stuff with the pushing and roaming strategy that uh, QSA will also be going for. Um, but early on, definitely going to be in favor of NY of Lehigh. Sorry, a bit of an engage in the top lane. Flash already used by Suman to try and get out of the grand entrance. Don't know if that was entirely necessary. That's going to be the kill. I mean, no kills going over yet um, in the bottom side as Flash was burned from Suman. Yeah, and a uh, bit of back and forth in mid lane again. Uh, Ooh, Archie Import yeah, has a been greedy. passive time winder Flash back to get that final um, pullback. Damage on the Q and Qsay with a clean first blood onto Argentine Import. Yeah, and I think, you know, Argentine Import, uh, I like the idea to try to trade back when the cooldowns were up, but really underestimated uh, oh. what the cooldown of Echo's abilities are, so. Morn did find out QC with the Swirl Seed, but was not able to finish him off, getting down to below 100 HP. Super, super good play coming out from um, Qsay to stay alive and get away with the kill early on. Yeah, and uh, I think Argentine Import uh, had to, you know, play around those cooldowns a little bit, a little bit earlier. You know, as soon as he hit level three, instead of just on that last engage, because uh, uh, it was really a close one as uh, he got a lot of damage down. But without the aftershock or anything, uh, uh -huh. he wasn't really able to abuse the um, Galio into Echo matchup. Looked like Zipheus and Lehigh were being pretty annoying there up top. Um, Taking, contesting that blue buff, um, not being able to steal it for himself, but we're talking about this early game pressure in the top side. Doesn't look like Morn's really going to be able to do that for himself for easy life as um, they kind of spotted him out early on. Yeah, but I mean, Kale is farming really well, and um, I think uh, as long as the Kale is able to sit there and farm and doesn't get too much pressure, they're completely fine with that. Wonder if Xiphias will start putting some points into the E now that he has level 4. Nope, gonna go for the standard W max instead. Um, would have been interesting, um, a bit of an interesting variation to see him go for that E max, but uh, looks like he values that um, those trades with the press the attack a little bit more. We're gonna see Riff, Riff Scuttler sorry, picked up on the bottom side for Lehigh um, as they see a lot of pressure garnering around the bot side as this dragon will the spawn. Yeah, and uh, with that massive wave up, Kale's gonna feel uh, completely free to farm, especially after that um, skirmish in the bottom side over that uh, scuttle crab, thinking, knowing he's completely safe. Just push that wave in, get a clean reset, and use that um, nine CS lead he has uh, to get some room for himself because he's already level five. Blasting Wad already picked up for Lehigh, doing 
a lot of good farming early on in this game. Getting those items is going to be crucial for the Shivana more than ever now with the Mythics now in the game. We're going to see push up in the bottom side uh, for easy life. I mean, sorry, for the bot lane. Kanzi going to go aggressive, but meanwhile, look at this mid lane. That's going to be Kyusei taken down to below 100 HP. Going to be one more Justice Punch will do it, and that's going to be it. Argentine Import picks up a solo kill. Basically, Morn was there for the help of the Squirrel Seed. Didn't able to get, wasn't able to get the assist, but it looks like a solo kill in return for Argentine Import. Yeah, that's kind of, that's what I was kind of talking about, you know, Galio has like just so much ability to like abuse melee uh, mage or melee AP champions that like, although Echo had that like one kill lead, uh, Galio just is going to be like stronger for a little bit, so uh, nice uh, nice draw from Argent Import, understanding the matchup, uh, we'll see uh, if, if he can, uh, you know, use that advantage to um, kind of snowball that lane and uh, get some more advantages out around the map because he still has the teleport up. Dragon picked up for the jumbos. Interesting look up top lane actually. Easy Life has the recurve bow. Um, I don't know if that necessarily builds in into any mythic items. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but what I do know for sure is that definitely builds into Nash's tooth. So we might actually see a situation where Easy Life ends up picking up uh, um, a Nashers before a mythic item completion, which would be a little bit um, unorthodox, but maybe a good idea for me. Yeah, I just think that's because Nash's Tooth, like, while it's only a legendary item, it's just so good on Kale, and uh, getting that early uh, can uh, definitely be stronger than uh, picking up that early mythic. Farming really paying off for Lehigh already has that ultimate available at level 6. Ultimate's already coming alive for Easy Life, so it looks like with that level 6, he did survive the kind of the worst part of the laning phase against this Volley Bear. Um, not really able to punish, actually ended up coming out on top in terms of CS, so good job from Easy Life on one of his favorite champions and a really solid job to kind of keep him in um, a good situation early on in this game. Yeah, and um, other than that, it seems like farm is just kind of the name of the game, and uh, I think that's kind of what Tufts really wants to do right now with uh, Lilia and Kale, just uh, get super farmed up and, uh, you know, try to use some of the playmaking with Alilia and Galio later to uh, find a little bit of an edge in this big game. Yeah, definitely want to see some more plays going towards that top side. Wow, that is a lot of burst damage coming out of Galio. Argentine Import already has a Hextech Alternator in his inventory, and with that, um, basically with that Shockwave that he, little, uh, that he does with that additional damage, as well as the passive and the Q, that's a lot of chunk onto Tuesday, and onto the wave as well. We can see some plays top with the pushing and running charge. And uh, Echo has the ability to match that a little bit. Uh, Echo's Q is really good for wave clear, but um, the Galio, you know, just has a little bit of uh, priority in this lane and can um, kind of set the tone for it. Yeah, after those trade of solo kills, looks like things have kind of slowed down a little bit um, in all sides of the map, especially in the mid lane. Flash is now available for Zoom in once again. Morn has now hit the level 6. Lilting Lullaby will be available. Constantine is here as well. Gonna use a grand entrance to try and knock up Kyusei. Not gonna hit it with the Chrono Break, but here comes Lehigh coming in with the ultimate. Aspect of the Dragon, and that's gonna be the um, Enchanted Crystal Arrow actually landing on the Argentine Import in the middle of the Hero's Entrance channel. Somehow, Suman ends up contributing to that kill and ends up saving the life of Lehigh. Meanwhile, another E Flame Breath going down onto Morn. Two quick kills picked up by Lehigh Phoenix. Yeah, that was a nice attempt from uh, uh, from Tufts, but just the Ash plus the uh, Rome coming in from the Shivana and the Leona there to match, you know, they were able to turn that really well. And Shivana, when she hits level 6, is super strong. The, you saw how much damage her E did right there when she was in dragon form. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and even without that runic echo still, Lehigh is just so strong on the Shivana. Already going for that AP. Um, items with the two amp tones in inventory as well. Has the smite upgraded. Has that chilling smite available. And I, I want to talk about that that arrow there from Suman real quick. Argentine import was in the middle of channeling his hero's entrance, shielding all the members and potentially knocking up three members of Lehigh. But with um, Suman canceling that, ended up probably turning that fight around for the better for Lehigh. So a really, really incredible job. From here. This again, just like why Ash is prioritize so much just the ability to have that uh, pressure with the ultimate um, you know sit there and ball in and farm but still win that fight in the mid lane just a really strong pick and Lehigh speaking of strong is hit level 8 almost he's out leveling some of the laners here on Tufts Argentine import is actually a level behind the Lehigh junglers so really showing how strong he can be and with that ultimate available looks like there's gonna be some pings towards the mid lane Argentine import might be getting ganked here by the Shivana 
Yeah, and Galio does have the extra uh, just like magic resistance built into his kit, so he um, won't be too scared, but still, it's a pretty strong Echo and Shivana threatening this guy. So. And on Ash, um, Suman already picks up the Rage Knife. Um, I, I don't know if that's how it works necessarily, but we're going to see a bit of a trade here in the bottom side. Morin using the Lifting Lullaby to sleep, the Watch Out, Eep, the Grand Entrance. It's all there and it's all against Tom. Soon he ends up falling. That's a dead Leona and a kill going over to Constantine Valdor. Yeah, and um, uh, like I said before, the Rage Knife does not work the uh, way it used to. They fixed that because it was way too broken for Ash, but it still could be uh, a good pickup. Gank in the middle lane here, too. looks like it's going to be a 2v2, Chrono Break already used, but that's going to be Lehigh taken down very low, Grand Entrance is used to knock up Kusei, he has no ultimate available, Curtain Call as well, Kazin picks up his second kill of the fight, but Curtain Call has been interrupted by the arrow, and Xiphius is here with the teleport, going to use the Stormbringer to come in, one more auto will do it from John Su from Suman, no, it's going to be Xiphius picking up the kill onto the Jin. and so overall, we do see the kill going over to Constantine Valdor, but another one for one trade for Lehigh, Rift is going to be spawned in the mid lane, and Dragon is on the menu for Lehigh. Yeah, that's a, um, Good job from uh, Lehigh, you know, using the teleporter from the volley barrel, using the Ash ulti to try to turn that and turn that into a dragon, but uh, still only a one for one. One for one, one for one on the dragons as well. Rift Herald maybe not be able to get his proc oh, Echo's off. Echo TP to the top the lane. Minions. Echo TP into the top lane, yeah, we're gonna see a bit of a trade, a lane swap here actually. Argentine Import and Ziphius are gonna try to fight it out here. But the Rift Herald is here to try and give him some assistance as well. We see the lightning pop onto Ziphius, this could be big. That's gonna be that second W proc, gonna crit him up. Easy Life might have a bit of a harder time against this Echo than he did against Ziphius. Having more gap closures, more damage, um, definitely gonna be a harder matchup for Easy Life on top. Yeah, but at the same time, with the ultimate W from Kale, uh, if a... Uh... Oh! Oh, uh, sorry again. Zipheus is going to be taken down. Looks like they went for a bit of an over-aggressive play, and that's going to be Morin and Constantine coming down to finish off the job on to the Leona as well. Lehigh is running for the hills. Had the ultimate available, but not able to use those flame breath to try and take any of them down. And that's going to be two quick kills picked up for the jumper. Yeah, and really good job from Tops, uh, matching the roam from the uh, Leona and the Shivana, and uh, really turning that one on its head. Constantine Valdor is now 3-0-0 zero, and zero on this for Khan. Just taking, oh, that's mine, that's mine too. Everything is mine. That has the most kills on the team. 300 gold bounty, this for Khan. Um, honestly, not even that bad to have it on him. Gonna get those mythic items quicker. Honestly, as soon as you get some of those mythic items, it's gonna be super valuable. Probably gonna be the Shirelia's, is my guess. Gonna be picked up for Rakan. It's gonna be really valuable with that extra movement speed, with the extra, like, ability haste, I think. And so, having that Rakan get those kills, um, obviously, you'd rather have it on someone else, but not too bad. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not too bad. Um, obviously, we don't want the gold to ha be too much on the Rakan, but it's still nice that they're getting a little bit of advantages. Uh, kills do mean a little bit of uh, uh, relaxation for the laners. They can like get some more gold from themselves by just free hitting farm and stuff like that, free hitting towers. But yeah, it definitely is uh, turning into a very interesting game. After a good start from Lehigh, it's actually Tuss in the lead here with 1.6 gold in front. Um, Kyose looks like he might have um, gone AFK for a couple of seconds or something as it's taking a nice trade from Argentine there. Adi, looking at these mythic items, what do you think is um, kind of the spikes that are soon to come out? Well, I mean, Luden's Echo is uh, picked up for the Shivana. Actually did not decide to go for the Night Harvester, but the Luden's Echo instead, which does actually add some burst damage as Luden's Echo does. That part hasn't really changed too much, but um, definitely very interesting. Uh, other than that, we have the Leandri's Anguish, I think it's called now, mm -hmm. uh, picked up for the Lilia, which is going to be a really strong, really strong, uh, adds a lot of extra damage. Dash's Tooth picked up for Kale, which like we talked about, is just a super good item on her. Uh, we have the Proto Belt uh, picked up for Galio, so that's going to be a lot more burst damage. I see a gank here in the top lane. It's going to be Xiphius and Lehigh going in aggressive, but that's going to be the hero's entrance and the Divine Blessing going to be used to try and buy some time, and it buys more than enough. That's going to be two kills picked up as the top side of Lehigh is down. Kusei is here to try and return a little bit of the favor, and he has a Chrono Drake available. Going to use it, but onto a taunted Argentine import only. The Lifting Lullaby will land, and it's going to be more and picking up another kill for himself. Three straight kills on the top side for the jumper. That was a little bit disrespectful, like, yeah, it's a Kale sitting in the top lane, but look at the composition that Tufts has drafted. This is exactly what they're trying to do. They want you to dive onto the Kale so that she can put that ultimate down, the Galio can ulti on top, and they can get a really easy 3-0 uh, win there in the top lane. 
first tower of the game is going to go over to this Kale, and she is one strong angel. She got 6,000 gold in inventory, 2,500 ahead of Xiphius alone. That is just shocking, honestly. Has a lot of in her inventory as well. Going to backpick from a lot of items for herself. Hopefully go for uh, one of those mythic items as well. We're going to see uh, Deadly Flourish actually land on to Simon in the bot lane, and this could be big. That's the quickness coming in. Nice stun from Hansi to try and keep him alive, but it's not going to be enough. Constantine with the Ignite will pick up his fourth kill of the game, and bot lane is going so well for Tufts. Everywhere is going right for the jump, but they now up a uh, four and a half thousand gold. Yeah, and um, Leeching Leer picked up for the Kale, which is a uh, mythic component, and if I... Uh... Use my uh, handy dandy uh, item uh, inventory thing on Google. Uh, that is filled oh, as into... you do that. That's gonna be. <laughs> Uh, he was talking about the items, but as he did that, Morin picks up a kill on the Hansoon, diving onto the bottom side. Um, Adi, do you have any updates? Uh, so I was actually, hold on, wait just a second. Aspect of the Dragon has been popped by Lehigh, and Kyosu is here as well. Gonna land the phase dive onto Morin. Jansu is here, gonna stun him up. Proto Break is available. Not even gonna be able to use the stun for way too long. Jansu picks up his first kill of the game. Here comes the rest of Tufts. It's gonna be a double kill going over to Morin. Sorry, to Jansu. And three kills in a row for Tufts. Everything is going so well. Adi, you were talking about that item. Yeah, it's the Rift Maker. It's the one that uh, lets you do more damage, like the more you are in combat. So makes sense. Kale likes to stay in combat for a long time. But uh, yeah, uh, Tops has turned turn this into like a really strong lead. And I think that's just because they're playing the map better. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Lehigh was going for a lot of uh, early game plays. You know, getting the roams around. But Tufts started matching them. They started using their Galio, using the Lilia movement speed to get around the map really fast. And uh, they have really matched those plays and made some more made some of their own and so they're now really strong they have um, a lot of gold in the places there needs to be gold i mean obviously the recon doesn't need the gold but uh the uh, lilia is really strong the kale is um going to be massive sitting on a level 12 uh, uh one and a half items uh about 800 gold in inventory um this is definitely gonna be an uphill battle for lehigh Certainly so. 6,000 gold lead being stared down from the Phoenix onto the Jumbos. And uh, looking at all of this stuff going on, we're going to see um, the Mythic item already almost completed for Easy Life. Um, but yeah, certainly a super strong Kale. The Shivana did manage to get a bit of a farm lead early on, but now has been matched uh, and caught up there from more in a little bit. So the Shivana not really at that hyper, hyper farming level that we've really been trying to see early on. Yeah, I think part of the reason people go for the Night Harvester instead of the Luden Tempest is because you're wasting that 600 mana and you still get burst damage from the Night Harvester. But uh, nonetheless, it will still add some burst damage. It will still be a pretty effective item. But um, yeah, uh, the Shrelia is uh, picked up for the Rakan, you know, using the 4 0 and 3 uh, score line to secure that mythic item for himself. And it looks like we see four. Um four Merc Treads picked up from Tufts. Um, <laughs> certainly super valuable. It looks really funny. They're just all on the line right yeah. now. Um, but yeah, with all the CC, definitely important. Easy Life might actually be caught out here. Solar Flare is going to be flashed away from, but Qusei with the Proto Belt is looking for more. He has the phase dive. It's going to be timed out though. Meanwhile, in the top side, that's going to be the Rift Trail spawn. Curtain Call has been issued and the quickness is available for Constantine Baldor. Constantine Argentine is going to land this taunt. The damage, everything is going to be going down and that's going to be Lehigh falling. Easy Life is actually trying to turn this fight around on the Qusei at the, as the Rift Trail picks up a kill onto the bottom, onto the top turret. And that's going to be potentially the inner going down as well. Zipius is still alive, but maybe not for long. That's going to be the roof of the Deadly Flourish. How can we have forced the Swordbringer away? Hansoon is still here, but that's going to be the uh, Rift Herald being used on the inhibitor as well. And they get so much from this Rift. They might even get one onto the Nexus turret. No, it dies right before that. But a brilliant play on the top side, trying to counteract the play that uh, Lehigh tried to make down onto Easy Life. Yeah, and Tusk is playing the map super well. You know, you got pressure in the top lane. Oh, looks like they're fighting again. Hansoon managed to flash out of the way there. The sleep was not issued there from Morn, and it looks like they're able to get out of that one <laughs> marginally safely. I mean, they kind of lost a lot there. But Easy Life is so strong in this kill. Has the passive stack, has everything working out for her, and that's going to be the middle inhibit, middle outer turret. Sorry, going under fire and most likely falling as five members of the Jumbos are there to pick it up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're just playing the map way better. You know. Uh, Lehigh try to go for the play onto their uh, 
Tuff's top laner, and Tuff's is like, you pressure my top laner, we'll pressure your top laner, and uh, yeah, it worked out really well. They were able to push that top lane all the way through the inhib, and uh, with uh, 9,000 goal lead, it's looking really bleak for Lehigh. Divine Sunderer picked up for Xiphias here up top. Um, definitely a really good item with all the healing that he has, and as well as some of the damage that you can get out of it. But uh, I don't know if it'll be enough. We do see um, Easy Life not having that. Um, oh, just finished the Rift Maker actually. Um, you know, it's going to be a huge power spike for the Kale. Going to be doing so much damage. Two levels, and um, look at that. Three and a half thousand gold ahead of Xiphias. Going to be really crazy the amount of damage she can do. And uh, I think Tufts can just kind of like play around their carries right now. They're super strong. They have the ability to keep them alive with the Galio and the Rakan and. Uh, I think they can just kind of uh, push their advantage and uh, try to close this game out fast. 21 minutes into this game, Kyusei looking to go aggressive, but he might be punished for it. That's going to be the curtain call and the quickness going out. Chrono Break already used, and he's trying to try to phase dive out of there. Going to be able to survive for now, but that's going to be the deadly flourish. No follow-up from the tough. Yeah, and Kale's just walking into the mid lane, ready to push that through, be the massive uh, backline carry that she is. Oh, speaking of that, that's going to be the backline of Lehigh, going to be under fire. Lehigh is already down, the namesake is dead, and that's going to be a huge hero's entrance coming in from Argentine Import, and the rest of Lehigh is dropping like flies. Double kill for John Stoop, might be a triple here, and that's going to be it. Triple kill coming out for the Jin, and 17-4 to 4 right now, 22 minutes into this game. They could be knocking on the base of Lehigh here. A really good draw from Tufts, uh, you know, just finding... Um Finding the Lehigh uh, sitting in a chokehold and using the uh, AoE they have to, you know, uh, finish them out. And it seems like they're going to go for the win here. Zippius is going to do all he can. He's going to Stormbring her forward, but that is the ace coming out from Tufts. And it was a really, I think, game two, they're going to say that it was a fluke. That's going to be a dominant 22 minute victory coming out from the Jumbos. And they win the series against Lehigh 2 to 1. Yeah, this is uh, really nice to see for uh, Tufts fans as. Uh, Coming out, coming after the last couple of weeks, it's uh, nice to see them have a really, uh, demand, a really um, commanding victory uh, going out of this. And um, yes, this was against uh, one of the teams that was 0-3, but nonetheless, very nice to see. Hey, you gotta say a win is a win. All you gotta, it's all you need, honestly. And for Tufts, this is a really good um, win for them as they pick up some momentum for themselves. They're gonna have some more tougher matchups later in, on in the season. And so getting this victory against Lehigh now is going to be super valuable. I'm going to look up their next uh, week's match right about now as we speak. And it's going to be against CCNY, another team. Oh, sorry. They're going to be, yeah, against CCNY. Um, I don't think that's, uh, looking at the standings for them, um, CCNY is currently, um, hold on. CCNY is currently uh, also towards the bottom at 0 and 3. So after kind of vaulting off of these next two teams, this could be a position for Tufts to try and come back here in the standings. And um, I'm not sure, but I think we're going to try to see if we can get an interview with uh, one of the Tufts members. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. We're going we're, we're gonna to take a quick break. We'll be right back either with an interview or just trying to close out the stream. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.
back, everybody. Uh, I'm here uh, with John Su, uh, the ADC for uh, Tufts, coming off of that uh, victory. I just had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you guys coming off of that. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about was just um, what were you guys' thoughts going into like each draft and like uh, picking each composition? Because you guys seem to pick like a slightly different composition each time. Yeah, so the first game, hang on. First game we were playing... Ba -ba -ba -bum. We picked the Shen, Sejuani, Victor, and Jin. And so basically we decided to first pick Jin because we feel like he's just giga broken at the minute. And you pretty much build him within Eclipse and you still shred tanks. Um, and like the Victor is obviously a very, very strong pick by itself. But we felt that like... Basically, we felt that the Yasuo kind of gets crapped on by the Victor, so we picked that. And the Shen really combos well with the Jin because they were going to be looking to try and dive in on us. So, yeah, I guess that's why. I mean, like, if you really wanted a better draft analysis, you shouldn't have asked the ADC player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just kind of there good. saying, I mean, like, I got first picked all three games because Jin's in a really good spot right now, I guess. Yeah, yeah and uh, I noticed you uh, go for the... Um... The Dark Harvest Eclipse build, but instead of going for the Collector, you started going for the Edge Knight. Uh, was that like because of the composition, or do you just think that Edge Knight is just a lot better than the Collector? Oh yeah, for the um, Malphite, uh, because I was playing against Malphite, right? And basically I feel like the Edge of Knight really, really helped me in that game. Simply because we had the two carries, so we had Victor, who was the AP, and me, who was the AD, and we basically had an agreement pre-game. Yo. Theo, you and I, we can't stand close together, man, because he's just going to ult us. And I said, hey, hang on, what if I just build an Edge of Night? And so basically, they didn't really have any long-range abilities aside from maybe a Caitlyn Q that could proc my Edge of Night. So all I had to do was just sit in the back line and wait for Malphite to engage. And every single time, the Malphite engaged on the Victor because I had that Edge of Night. So yeah, it was a definitely a composition thing. Um, the last game, I didn't want to go for it because I felt like a Collector would be really good to push our early lead. Um, and like, I didn't really see a reason to get Edge of Night because it wasn't like they were getting on me or anything. I was just kind of blowing them up. So decided to go for more kill pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, talking about that uh, game, how did you guys, uh, what were you guys thinking like during game two? And how'd you like come away from that going into game three? There was uh, a little bit of tilt coming out of game two uh, simply because, I mean, we went over it right after the game ended. And uh, our top laner felt like there needed to be a lot more pressuring bot because the Kha'Zix kept ganking top. Uh, but we went through it and we found that there weren't really any opportunities to pressure bot. Um, and basically, Kha'Zix was getting free kills. And he eventually got to a point where, I mean, we picked Lee Sin because Lee Sin is stronger than Kha'Zix early game. And so the mid and jungle can fight that 2v2 really well. Uh, but that went completely out of the window after the botched mid gank. So what ended up happening was that Kha'Zix and Cassiopeia were a lot stronger than our Echo and Lee Sin. And Lee Sin was just farming and farming and trying to get back up. And Top was just dying to the Kha'Zix and giving him a lot of gold. Um, so we kind of just decided, uh, we came to an agreement with our top laner. He was kind of like, I don't know, really know, like, you guys aren't telling me um, whether I should play safe or not play safe. Or, you know, you have to tell me these things. And then we kind of came into this third game thinking, okay, we need to set these expectations to be very, very clear before we get into the game. Like, you can play aggressive when this happens, you can't play aggressive when this happens. I think that was reflected really, really well in the game three that we played. Like, Kale basically just sat under turret and farmed, and there were no problems with top. And then we were able to push our advantages on the other side of the map. And so I believe that us losing that second game, although it was kind of a little bit bad for a mental maybe, it got us to really, like tackle these problems uh, which had actually cropped up before in like scrims and stuff. Uh, and it's, you know, the fact is we won the third game uh, coming off our advice from the second game. So I'm really happy that it happened then and not like further down the line when we have a more important match, I guess. Yeah, yeah and uh, talking again about uh, some of the challenges you guys have been uh, seeing, you guys did come off a, a two game losing streak and then weeks two and three, but you bounced back pretty well. So what, uh, what were you guys doing to kind of like uh, bounce back and uh, you know look? For, what are you going to like try to keep doing as you go forward to this season? Well, I think one of the things that uh, the coaches did for us was uh, reevaluate like the team compositions that we built and stuff because some of the stuff that we thought was going to work didn't actually work, uh, and especially with like the new season coming in, we really needed to do that anyway. Uh, and we did have a lot of VOD review and kind of like after every game, we discussed like what went well, what could have gone better, and 
I believe like through this continual improvement, we're starting to pick up the pace a little bit. So I mean, although the two losses in the row were kind of demoralizing at the start, like we eventually figured, hey, you know, if there's any time that we should be getting these losses, it's at the start of the season, you know, when we're trying to get to know like how all of us play and which strategies work the best for a team rather than later on. So like um, Aaron and the coaches were very clear. They're like, guys, you know, we may lose these two games. It doesn't actually matter that much. Like, what matters is that, you know, we can get to a point where we don't lose these games anymore uh, because we're basically trying things out and learning about how we play. Yeah, so I guess it was kind of... I felt really bad about it, though, like seeing our name on the ladder. And, yo, every single time we lose a game on CSL, we get an email from them. Can you believe that? All right, I just can't, all right? You get an email saying your team has lost a match. I'm like, okay... You think I don't know that? I, I was in the game. Like, I know we lost. Like, it's just additional BM on top of that. Like, you lose the game. You're like, oh, I should have played better, this, this, and that. And you just, the, your email opens up. And it's like, your team has lost the match in the CSO league. Like, I know, dude. I was playing in it. Yeah, sorry. A uh, little bit of an aside there. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the preseason. Uh, that was a pretty big change, you know, coming in, uh, coming in this week. It's been live for, like, maybe three days and one of the biggest preseasons we've seen in a while. So what were you guys doing to prepare and uh, how well did you guys think, uh, how well, how well prepared you guys think you were coming into this one? I mean, like I got to hand it to the coaches for this one. Like they really hit the books hard and like, we're trying out all sorts of different combinations of items and stuff to see which champions would be the strongest. Like the night before preseason drop, like Aaron and I, and uh, I think, Theo, we were kind of sitting in a call. No, actually, someone from B team sitting in a call and like going over the items and figuring out which ones might be good and which ones we want to run. Um, and I think that really helped because then it gave all of us like time to individually experiment. And that was actually the thing, right? Like we only played a few like scrim matches together and maybe like one or two flexes, flex games together. And those weren't really great for data collection anyway because we kind of just tend to int flex games. Um, <laughs> But basically, we all went off on our own ways and tried out like builds for the champions that we liked, uh, and to see whether it'd be good. I mean, it's better, right? You have like five people trying to work out separately, you know, what would be best for their own role, and I felt like it really worked quite well. And we all brought it together, and we we sat down before the game, and we were like, guys, you know, like I think like this is really strong. We should play in the scrims, or this isn't really strong. Never play it, or and we were even in like the champion select when sorry the pro draft when we were like selecting champions and stuff we were like that's probably not a good champion to play here like it's not going to be relevant so we'll play towards x side or y side and yeah so i think that we handled that really well and i have to give the coaches a huge pat on the back because they were definitely a big instrumental force behind our victory today yeah awesome well i mean obviously congratulations you guys had a pretty nice win uh coming uh Hopefully this will be a uh, upper trajectory and wins, you know, secure you guys a uh, spot in the playoffs. Before I let you go, uh, I just have to ask this one last question that we ask at the end of all these interviews. Yeah, any shout outs? Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my sister. Shout out to my, my baby brother, Jenshin. I love you, man. And shout out to the rest of the A team. Shout out to the B team. I don't think we have a C team, but shout out to the C team anyway. Shout out to the coaches. And, you know, shout out to you guys for making this absolutely awesome opportunity. Like, like when I saw the first interview, I was like, dude, I definitely want to be on this thing. It looks so damn fun. And the way you guys have run it so far has been really cool. And like having a stream that you can like present to people like, hey, we're playing, like, come and watch us here. And then like, you know, like, wow, you know, you got a stream. It's all professional looking and stuff is, uh, you know, a, a big factor uh, in moralize that moralizing, uh, increasing our morale, I guess. Sure. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming in and uh, talking to us. Uh, great job today, and uh, hopefully we will uh, see some more strong performances from you in the upcoming weeks. And um, I think that is it for us uh, over here at JumboCast. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for uh, coming in and watching. Uh, make sure to tune in next week. Uh, I actually will be flying back home to Seattle next Saturday, so I will not be with you guys. However, we will have two great casters again and uh you guys should come in 3 p.m eastern time and uh yeah we'll see you guys later thank you all for coming <laughs>